going to be doing today, uh, looks like Great Western Trail, teaching you the game and then showing you how to play it. You know, we're going to do a playthrough. Um, this is different for a camera setup because we had to use so many cameras to show this game that uh, we've only got the one right here. So after I go through and teach you the game, um, we'll take a brief moment to reset up so we can get our cameras in our normal positions and then we'll play through the full game. So uh, I guess without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Great, so uh, in Great Western Trail, um, this, you have this massive board and there's so much information everywhere around the board and it all matters. I'm gonna try my best to make sense for you. Now, all the rules we're gonna be doing today are going to be two player rules, which are um, just slightly different than the three and four player rules, but it'll give still the basic concepts are the same. In the end, this is a point salad. Now, I hate to call it a salad because uh, it's more like a point feast, really, when it comes down to it. There's so many ways to get points, whether it be from the cattle you have to the buildings you build to the train that you that you, stations that you that you go to, you're going to see it. It's all going to come together. So the primary mechanic in this game is you're going to be taking your cowboy, okay, and you're going to be moving him around the map, ultimately delivering to Kansas City a hand of cattle. Hope they can see this a hand of cattle. So I'll get to what these mean in a moment. So um, throughout the game, um, you're going to be able to move your cowboy in a two-player game up to three spaces. Now each tile that's on the board is considered to be a space. You can move up to three. So if I wanted to, I could go one, two, three. Or if I wanted to go to this space, I can go one, two and take the action that's there. Now every single tile is a space. So as we build buildings in the game, more spaces will be created. Um, and therefore it takes longer and longer to take your cattle over to Kansas City. Um, whatever space you end up on, you're allowed to take a variety of actions. And we'll get, to the we'll get to the specifics soon about what actions you can take because they're very different based on where you end up and based on which player you are. But uh, again, we'll go through that throughout the game. But in general, you're going to be moving your cowboy from place to place until eventually you get to Kansas City. And that's where I want to focus right now. So this game is ultimately a deck builder. I know that sounds crazy with everything I just said, but you're going to have a deck of cards. See the main screen here? A deck of cards with cattle, okay? Each of these cattle have a color and a breeding value, okay? They, each color has its own name. Now everyone starts with the exact same deck of jerseys, Dutch belts, uh, Gurdens, I feel bad, I don't know how to say that, Black Angus, different cows, right? But you're going to draw your hand size of four. So this is my original hand size here. Now as you're moving across the board, you're going to be able to cycle your hand and change it. So at the end of each round, if you were to discard a card for whatever for a reason, you would draw another from the deck to replace it. Just like any deck builder like Dominion or, the other, or any other deck builder. So let me show you how the primary mechanic in this game works. When your token, when your cowboy arrives in Kansas City, you're going to assess the breeding value of your hand or otherwise known as your herd. Okay, The breeding value of your herd is the total numbers of each unique card you have. So in this case, I have two of these Gurzneys, Gurnseys. Um, I can only get credit for one of them because it only counts unique ones. So I'm only gonna get, get two, one, and two, so a total breeding value of five. So that's how you understand the game. Now, if I were to have gotten rid of that earlier and were to pull in this, whoops, not that one. I had it ready. This card, then I'd have a breeding value of seven, which is the highest breeding value you can get at the beginning of the game without other modifiers. So let me show you what a breeding value of seven can do for you on the game board. So when we reach Kansas City, and I need a super detail here, great. Um, well, first thing we're doing is we're gonna go through Kansas City in five steps. Now you may be weird that I'm focusing on the end of the game now, but this is really what you're doing this whole game is building up towards this main mechanic. Now it's not the only way to get points, it's just one of the biggest ways to get points. So as you take each step, now once you've reached step one, you actually go through the process. You don't take three steps again. Again, these are tiles, so you're not taking steps to move on them. So we go to step one, and these tiles will come in the game. You choose which one you put in the game, and then you go to step two, choose a tile to put in the game, and then go to step three and choose a tile to put in the game. Now you notice the tiles are different from each other. Some of the tiles are like these, they're like hazards. They have specific places on the board they go. But these are employees. They go in the job market. So anytime you choose an employee, they go down here to this bottom part onto the job market. Now, the first player that's gonna, that's gonna take a guy is gonna actually move the job market token down and it takes the place. When we get to hiring employees, you can always hire any employee that's above the job market for the cost that's printed there. And that negative money is the cost. Um, so. 
When this uh, token eventually moves off the board, and it will keep moving down, the game will end when it moves off the board. And so there will be a certain number of rounds before that happens. So we'll go back and show this again. Okay. Now, if you remember, we had a breeding value of seven with our hand. We had a green, a white, a gray, and a black. And they were breeding value total of seven. So the first thing we do is any unequal cards, you can see the iconography, which means unequal colors, um, you'll count the breeding value. Plus any, um, I can't remember what that's called, the purple ribbons, basically, will add to the breeding value. We'll get to those in a moment. You gain that much, that many dollars. Okay, so in this case, we would gain for our breeding, for our seven, our, our seven breeding value, seven coins, okay? These seven coins are then yours to spend. We're gonna put them up here for a second because I'm gonna show, show you what they do. Then we move to step five, which is the most important step. Step five says we take our breeding value of seven and that determines which city we can deliver to. So I wanna show you something. We've got a railroad track here, okay? And we got little rail cars. At first they're on zero, but we'll, they'll be moving around as we go through the game. But you'll notice that each one has a special number above it, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what it means is, with a breeding value of seven, we can go seven to the seventh space right here, which means we can deliver to Colorado Springs, Wichita, Topeka, or Kansas City. Now, in order to signify that we're delivering there, um, we're going to take a white. We're going to take one of our tokens off our board. I'll show you these more in detail in a moment, and we're going to choose which city we deliver it to. So let's say I took this token off my board and delivered to Colorado Springs. Okay, that's a breed value of six. That doesn't really mean much. What I do then is I count the number of crossroads between where I delivered and my current train position, and that's how many dollars I lose. So of the seven, I'd have to give back one, two, three dollars, okay? So then I'd only get to keep four of it. But you understand kind of how this works. Now, each of these cities has a different color around it, white or black or white, okay? That's because these tokens on our board either have white borders or black borders that, are, that we'll see in a moment that show you what kinds of, uh, of disc, where you can put your discs from your, from your game board. But I want to show you a few more things. So let's say I've already delivered to Colorado Springs and I've got another breeding value of seven. I can't deliver to the same city twice with two exceptions. One is Kansas City, which is the earliest one, and the, and the best one is San Francisco, which is off the board, which is, requires a breeding value of 18. So I need to place it somewhere else. So because I have a breeding value of seven, I can't actually get to Santa Fe. So I would go to, say, Wichita or Topeka. So let's say I go to Wichita, no problem. Except at the end of the game, because I own these, I've delivered to these two spaces, I will get negative one victory point at the end of the game. And you'll notice there's different benefits based on where, or benefits or penalties based on where you deliver. So if I were to deliver to Colorado Springs and Santa Fe, I would get to draw a goal. This game does have goals, and as you collect the goals, you can make points. They're kind of like um, uh, uh, the train game that everyone likes. What's it called? Uh, Ticket to Ride. And the goals are if you meet them, you get bonus points. If you don't meet them, you lose points. There's a little more nuance to it, but essentially that's what they are. And you can see over here that as you put them here, you'll start gaining points for creating, for, for, for delivering to these adjacent cities, okay? Um, now, Kansas City, I mentioned to you, you can deliver to Kansas City as often as you want. However, every time you do, you lose six points at the end of the game, and you get six coins. So to, re to go over this one more time, you assess the breeding value of your hand, which is the number of different cattle you have, plus any ribbons you have, equals how much money you receive. Then use that same breeding value to deliver to any city that's at or below your breeding value. So if you had a breeding value of 10, you could deliver from Albuquerque all the way down to Kansas City. You cannot deliver to the same city twice, with the exception of the bottom and the top cities. So that we're gonna show you this in detail in the game. So um, part of the game will be moving our train past these little railroad markers to sh so that we pay less money to go further. Um, remember, because you lose coins for every railroad marker you pass between your train and wherever you deliver your cattle. Okay, so that's the thing. So uh, let's take these back for a minute and we're gonna focus back on our main board and show you where those discs came from. Okay, so this is your playmat, okay, right here. Your playmat has, this is a great playmat, by the way. I, wanna, I just wanna say, this playmat's fantastic. It has almost all the information you need for the entire game. So we mentioned at the beginning that we're playing on the two player map. So right here, this is two players, okay? So it shows that this is a different piece based on how many players you have. So notice it says three. That's how many spaces we can move in a turn. Now, remember how we took off these discs and we were able to put them out in the cities that we delivered to? Well, notice that when I take off this disc, which is a black border, 
um, I get to move my person even further. If I got both discs, I'd move even further. Now, you don't have to remove them in any particular order. I could remove this one first if I wanted to. In fact, that's true for anything on the board here. I can remove them in any order I want. But I do want to show you they have a white and a black border, right? So um, the white borders can only go on the, on the white spaces on the board, like I showed you Wichita or Colorado Springs. But Albuquerque and El Paso have a black border, so they can have either a white or a black border uh, uh, discs put on them. Okay, so I'll go through generally what these mean. So when you're moving, you'll cross these little hazard hands. Okay, now in a two-player game, both hazards, if you cross them, will cost you two dollars for each hand type that you see. In other player games, for instance, three-player games or four-player games, the hands are worth different values. Okay, you also can see over here your hand size. Remember how we? It's a it's a deck builder, right? So your default hand size is four, and it will always be four by the end of the round. However, if you pay five coins whenever you place one of these discs, whenever you place one of these discs, you can increase your hand size permanently. So it will go up to say five, and you can even get it up to six. Okay. Um, next is this area over here, which is uh, the, the the purple ribbons. Now there's things in the game that will actually give you ribbons that move this down. Okay. Opening up these slots, open up new slots for your ribbons. To, oops, whoops. For your ribbon, this is just uh, really thin, 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 thin cardboard here. So. Um, will ultimately let you move down your breeding value further. Now, however far it's down is how much you can add to your hand breeding value. So right now, if we were to, for instance, go to um, Kansas City with a breeding value of seven as what was in our hand, and we had three here, we could spend some or all of it to add to our breeding value to make it a 10, for instance, if we used all three. That would give us 10 coins, and we'd be able to go all the way to Albuquerque, the 10 slot, which is, one of the which is the first space you can use a black disc. Great, so that's this side of the board. Let me focus on this side of the board. Now at different points, actually, you know what, let's go back to the actions. So this here is a very general guide that I will be going over in much more detail, but it tells you what you're allowed to do based on which space you land on. So I'm playing the red player, so if I go to a red space, or if I go to a neutral space, I can do what's called the exclamation point, which is I can do all of the actions on that space, or I can take a single gear action. Um, if I go to a space that's not my color, and there's red, blue, and yellow people in the game, or I end up on a hazard, or I end up on a TP, I can take a single gear action. So just understand, you can always take a single gear action, which I'll get to what those are in a moment. But if I'm on my color building, or if I'm on, and for example, here's my color building right here. That's a building I can build eventually on the board. Um, or I go to a neutral space, which has this kind of darker brownish gray color then I can take all the actions on that space. Otherwise, I'm taking a gear action. So the gear actions are over here on this side of the board. So a single gear action is anything underneath this gear, okay? Some actions are gonna let you take a row of gear actions, which is why you can unlock a row. I'll get to those actions later, but for now, let me just cover what they do. This will give you a dollar for this gear action. This lets you draw a card and discard a card. Cycling is very important in most um, deck builders, and it's no different in this game. This allows you to move your train back one to move your breeding value or your or your um, your uh, your purple ribbons up one space. This allows you to, to lose a coin to move your train up again, uh, lose a good dollar, and this allows you to move your train back for the all important as in most um, deck builders. You can remove a card permanently from your deck. So those jerseys that are worth you know one breeding value that that populate your deck at the beginning, um, those are possible to get rid of as well as some of the other duplicates you may not want anymore. So you can really refine your hand. But that's essentially all the gear actions. Um, as I open up these slots, I open up the ability to use these gear actions whenever I take these spaces. So that leaves us with this area. These are your employees, okay? We have cowboys, um, I think these are craftsmen, and engineers, okay? Each one is tied to a different element of the game. In general, though, I want to tell you, whenever you hire somebody, you put them in the next spot right here across, okay? If you ever cover a space that's on the board that has some sort of iconography, you can do that action immediately whenever you hire that person. By the end of the game, if you can get them all the way, if you can get enough employees to go all the way to the end, you'll also score points. Okay, so that's basically the board here. I, I, we will be going over these things in more detail as we go along, but for now, suffice to say, we'll get to the, well, let's get to the actions on the board next. So we're gonna go back to the board, and we're moving over there now, okay. Back to the board, and we're going to start. Now, we're not going to do these in any particular order, but I hope you can see this area here. This is where we're going to start. And we're going to move around the board based on what actions are easiest to explain. So this, um, I need a secondary of this on the left side. Cool. If you can pull that over there. 
One second, we're almost ready. Okay, great. So here we go. So that way I can show you some detail over here. So this particular tile um, allows you to, and many of them do this, allows you to discard a white two. Now a white two always represents a, 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 a cattle in your hand. So I can discard a, a, a white with a breeding value of two. By the way, all the whites are breeding value of two. It's just a double reference for the card uh, for colorblind, but it's a, I, think, I think it helps actually. Actually it wouldn't, because it wouldn't matter. But anyway, um, you can discard this two for two coins. Then you can take these other actions. Now each, each of these spaces on this are separated by a line. That's not an or. You can do these three actions in any order you choose, um, you know, and in and, and any number of these actions. So I could take this one and this one, for instance, or I could take all three, or maybe just the back two. It's my choice, however I do it. Okay, but ultimately this is a space on the board. What this space allows you to do, in, and I'll show you my hand, uh, just to give you an example of where we were a moment ago. If you remember, we started out with two whites, right? Well, one of the things I wanna be able to do is cycle my hand, so I might go to that space discard the white, get $2 for it, and then at the end of the round, after I've taken the action, I can then draw a new card in my hand. Now, that wouldn't be a great one for me, but you can see kind of how the cycling works, okay? So once I've done that, then I can take the action printed here. And the action printed here allows me to um, hire a person. So let's go, I'm gonna show you where the hiring is. The hiring board is up here. Now, again, I mentioned this earlier, anybody above the job market indicator, which is this token right here, which also represents the end of the game when it moves off the board, I can hire anybody above them. So in this case, I could, for six coins, I hope I didn't move something, I could hire an engineer or a craftsman, okay? An engineer or a craftsman. So um, if I hired them, I would literally take them, put them directly onto my board, and now they're hired, right? And so they have later effects in the game as far as it goes. Now notice in this, a in this action space, I'll bring it back over here, I can actually, I'll bring it up closer actually, I can hire twice, but the second one I hire will cost me two more coins, okay? Cost me two more coins. So that's important to understand that I can hire twice with this, but it's very expensive. So it would actually cost me $14 to hire two people, six, six, and then two more. Okay, great. So that's the first action, very important action. Let's move on to this action here, in the middle of the board here. I'm gonna bring this up close for you again. Okay, so this one says that I can discard any two equal cattle, cattle that are the same color basically, for four coins and then I can remove a hazard for the cost of seven. So let's talk about hazards for a minute because hazards are important towards goals and they also score you points. So I'm, let me show you on the board where the hazards are. So there's these tracks of four spaces all around the board. Um, actually there's three groups of four that represent different types of hazards. Water hazards, I think these are desert hazards, and these are mountain hazards, okay? Now a hazard space, notice how it has, there we go again, these little hands, okay? Remember how we showed the hands on the board were negative points, so if I, negative coins. So if I were to want to move past this hazard, it would cost me two, coin, it would cost me two coins for every hazard I move past. Um, so in this case here, I've got one, two, three hazards across. I would never want to go this way, but if I did, it would cost me six coins. Now that's an important thing to mention about hazards or anytime you have to pay, pay somebody or pay a hazard cost. If you can't afford to pay it, you're still allowed to move. You're not required to stop there. You don't have to wait until you have more money. You can keep going. You just don't pay any more money after that. It can, it can basically bankrupt you. But there's a way to remove the hazards and that's this space here. So for seven, I can choose any hazard I want on the board and just pick it up and keep it. Now when I keep the hazard, oops, pick it up and keep it. So when I keep the hazard, I will score the victory points printed on it. Notice they always have victory points. They're always between two and four victory points. So this is a good one. This is a three. And there's other, but if there was one on the board that was a four, like there is up at the top, I might want to take that one instead. So um, hazards are important for goals. And let's actually show you a goal with a hazard, which I don't have in front of me. Okay, we'll find one in just a moment here. Yeah, you'll have to go through the deck. I'll go through the goal deck. So here you go. So here's an example of a goal in the game. Now I'll get to all the goal symbols in a moment. See the little hazard symbols? In order for me to complete this goal and gain five points and not lose three, I would need to collect two hazards throughout the game. And that space that I showed you is the primary way to gain has is to, to take a hazard. Also, you'll notice on my board that if I ever put down my fourth cowboy, I also get to take a hazard for free. Notice there's no there's no point, there's no there's no dollar cost on it. So it's a hazard for free. Great. So let's go through some more of the things you can do in the game. Okay. All right, so this, let's see if I can skip that one. Let's go over to this space right here. This space is important. 
This space is, we're going to introduce a couple concepts. One, notice how there's, remember how I mentioned the line between means you can take both actions or either action? Well, in, in the case between action where this is white line, that does mean or. So it might be a little confusing the first time you play it, but eventually, but it'll make sense eventually. So in this, you can either pay two coins and move your train up two spaces, or you can take a TP. You can trade with the Indians. So let's talk about trading with the Indians, and then I'll come back to this. So let me go back to the board. So on this board, there's going to be this whole group of Indian teepees. Now, similar to other ones, they have the hands. So if I ever walked on these tiles, I would have to pay coins every time I walked on them. But I'm going to. But what I can do is, is I can by taking this action, well, the action I showed a moment ago, I can pick up any TP I want, and I collect the money or pay the fee above it. So if I really needed this blue TP, and there's reasons I might need it because some goals require blue TPs, right? I would pick this up, I would pay two, and then I get this blue TP. But let's say the TP was down here and I wanted to get it. That's a six dollars up there. So if I take this one, I would actually gain six dollars in trading with the Indians. So the more TPs there are in the game, um, and those come in through, um, you know, throughout the game, they come in throughout the game, the more they're valuable they are when you take them, okay? So that's the first element of that action space. So let's go to this next part of the action space. And that is the ever important double gear action. So this means, remember how before you could take a single gear action, which meant anything over here on the left side, right? Well, if you have this here, it's a, it's a row of, you can take a, a row action for a gear, which means, and I'll put this up here to show you, I can take any row that's unlocked. So if I had unlocked this row incomplete, completely and had taken this action, then I can actually draw two cards and then discard two cards. Or if I had this row unlocked, I could gain two, $2. And so you'll see that these ultimately compound on each other, and these row actions are, can be very, very important for cycling your hand, gaining needed money, um, shoring up a preparation of a, you know, delivering cows to, to, uh, to uh, Kansas City. So great, that's that action. Now the rest of these I'm gonna show you are gonna be pretty detailed, and we're gonna start with the engineer, okay? So the engineer action is right here. Now this was in the bottom left corner of the board. You'll notice it has the opportunity for a row of actions. We've already covered that one. But you notice it has a purple and a one, and then a train one. Well, similar to Magic the Gathering, for every one engineer I have, colon, I can move my train up, up to one space. So you'll notice at the beginning of the game, I have one engineer, and I can't see it very well because of the thing, but one engineer is here, but I can put more engineers down. So if I were to have four engineers, with this action space, I can move my train four times. So on the main board, let me show you how the train works. So the train board, you're gonna be moving your train along these spaces. So at first I start at zero. So if I were to move up, say, one space, because I only have one engineer at the moment, I would end up on the one space. Now that doesn't really help me a lot, but I, you know, ultimately I'm gonna move around this board. Now let's say Marco were to also take a one uh, train, an action where he can go one space. He actually doesn't end up where I am, he actually gets to jump me. So that's an important element of the game and that how you can move around with trains. You'll never end up in, in the same spot as somebody else, so you can use them to leapfrog each other. But let's use an example. Let's say I could have moved up to, let's say I'm, I'm here, and I got the ability to move two more train spaces, okay? So I have a couple options. I could go this way along the main track, or I can use the train space to turn into one of the train stations. And that brings us to this symbol here, train stations. Now you'll notice that on the train station, it has similarly a white circle um, just like our delivery cities did. So if I want to use this train station, I would pay this cost, it costs two coins, and then I can take one of my white discs and place it here. Similar to the delivery of the cities, you can only have one token per train station you go to. Why are train stations important? Well, some goals require train stations, okay? But at the end of the game, I'll also gain one point for having it. So not only is it upgrading my board, it gives me a point. But here's something else it does. This is a station operator token, okay? Anybody who comes here has first come, first serve privilege to take it. I can actually take this token and the benefits it brings, and I'll tell you what it does in a moment. But to do so, I would need to take, let me just take a person off the board, okay, show you where it is. So let's say I had a cowboy or somebody else on my board, I would actually have to assign one of my existing employees to take the space as the train operator, as the uh, station operator, to take this token. So let me show you what this token does in detail. Every one of these tokens, these, these operator tokens, has a one-time benefit at the top. This one in particular is gain two coins, okay? At the bottom, they always have an end game scoring bonus. In this case, for every employee I have on my board, I'll gain a point. So pretty good if you're gonna make a lot of employees. Now there's nothing that says you have to take these. Um, you can choose to put a disc there, you can choose to bypass it, 
or you can choose to put a disk there and replace the station operator with your one of your employees, and then take this to take this token. Um, by virtue of just having the um, disk there is what matters for the purpose of uh, of of having uh, rails of having train stations, which matter for some of the goals. Okay, so that in a nutshell is how trains work. So when you are on the space and you want to go backwards a space, you'll notice that some of the row actions we could take, or the gear actions, allow us to move back a space. Well, if I was on the eight and wanted to go into this station, that might be a reason to go backwards, right? So I can go ahead and take get that get access to that. And you'll notice that though this goes a long way. As you get further and further along, not only do you get to put either black or white discs down, which are very powerful, but the ratio of points to cost goes up, 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 up. So. Um, it becomes a it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a method to win the game on its own, okay, as far as points go. Okay, great, so that takes care of our train action. Now let's go to uh, the two biggest things in the game, and that's cowboys and building, okay? We'll actually start with cowboys, okay? So cowboys do one thing really well. They help you gain cattle. So on the board, I'm going to bring this to you. On the board, you're going to see this action. This action allows you to discard a black Angus or a black two to gain two coins, and then you can go to the cattle market. That's what that means, cattle market. Now the cattle market, we're gonna show you in detail right now. Okay, so at the bottom of the board is the cattle market, okay? How many cattle are in the game, which are these which are these cards right here, which I'll show you in detail, just right here, um, are new cows that you can add to your game. So for, think about it, you're playing a deck builder. These values are, breeding values are threes and fours and fives. You also notice that they have victory points printed on them. Like that's a six, that's a five, that's a three, there's some ones. So essentially, going to the cattle market lets you buy new cards to add to your deck that could come into your hand when you deliver to Kansas City for better and better breeding values. After all, how else do you get an 18 breeding value without having some seriously good cattle in your hand and a large hand? So what the Cowboys allow you to do is allow you to buy from the cattle market. Now, most players only start with one cowboy. So here is a guide, and you may not be able to see it very well. There's a guide here that shows you what each cowboy can do. So you can spend one of your cowboys. Now when I say spend, I don't mean you discard the cowboy, okay? I mean that you, um, if I had two cowboys, I could use one for this, and then maybe one for this, or maybe use both of them doing this. So the idea is that I spend one of my cowboys, and I can buy either a red, yellow or blue cattle, which are, the th which are the three breeding value cattles, like this one, right, for six coins. If I were to have two cowboys, I could buy one of those same ones for three. Three cowboys, I could buy both, I could buy two for five, okay? And they get better as you go along. These are the brown cattle, which are worth a lot more points. You'll see they have a one, three, and five rating, and then of course the purple cattle, which are the best, which have a two and a four. So let's use a, a unique example. Let's say I have four cowboys, okay? In my, in my hand. Well, I can spend one of the cowboys to draw two random new cattle onto the game board. So I would literally take two cattle from the cattle deck, which I'll show you right here, and add them to the deck of what I can buy, which that used one of my four. I have three left now. So if I wanted to use the three that I had remaining, I could buy both of these for five or any of the other yellow or red or uh, blue cattle that are in the cattle market, okay? Now at different points of the game, the cattle market's gonna fill up, but essentially, you spend cowboys in order to buy whatever de denomination of cattle you want to add to your deck. Not only are they worth points, but they also add to your breeding value for the purpose of delivery. Okay, and that brings us to our very last action, which I'm gonna show in the detail camera here. This is the building action. So on the left, you can discard, you knew it was coming, a green cattle for two coins, and then you can build, okay? Now I wanna show you the details on the build. Now the build says for every um, craftsman you have, colon, you can spend two coins, okay? And then build that many levels of, of building. And now notice I said levels of building, okay? So craftsmen, number of craftsmen you have, which are right here, correspond to how many levels of building you can build at once. So let me show you the levels of buildings. Everyone has access to these these buildings here, okay? There's 10 buildings. They were randomized at the beginning as far as what side they're on, okay? They have a couple of they have a couple things to note. One, they're in your color. So only you can take actions, or you, only you can take the actions that are down here on the building. Remember, if somebody else lands on your color, they can always take a single gear action. Some of them have hands, which means you'll collect money from people who pass them, okay? 
All of them have victory points that are printed up in the upper right hand corner, and each of them has a special set of actions that you have available. But what I want to focus on is on the level. So this one here is a level one building, level one, level one, level two, level three. So if I were to take a basic building action, and I only had one craftsman, I can only build one level of building, which is basically one of these. I would pay two coins, pick this up, and put it on the board somewhere. I can choose where, but let's say I put it right there. So there's my one level of building. Now let's say later in the game I've come back around and I have that one craftsman again, which means I can build one level of building. So I can either take another level one and put it somewhere on the board, or I can actually add a level to an existing building. In this case, my one can become a two. So that would cover that. Now I would only get the points associated with the top building. The bottom building for all purposes in the game is gone. You don't get it back, it just covers it. It's out of the game, okay? But that's how building works in general. You add up the number of craftsmen you have, you pay two coins for each craftsman that you want to use to build, and for each craftsman you use, you can add that number of levels of buildings, whether it be in, the, in new buildings or upgrading an existing building. Now, I want to mention, unlike the cowboy where you could do multiple cattle and split them however you want, you're only allowed to build one building per turn and that's it, okay? So the last thing I'm gonna cover now is the, are the goals. So in the game, you're gonna have, I'm gonna show you some of, our, some of our goals that are out there, okay? So these are some of the goals that start the game. In the beginning of the game, there's always going to be four goals available at any given time. Whenever something prompts you to take a goal, you can take one of the four that are down there and it goes, just like a deck builder, into your deck, okay? Now when a goal is drawn to your hand, as with a deck builder, eventually it'll cycle in, you can, it doesn't do anything for you in breeding value, it doesn't have a breeding value, but it does have a one-time cool effect. For instance, if I were to use this goal, I would, get to, I would get to not only do the whatever action on the space I was on, but also by playing this goal, I would get to take a row of gear actions, which is pretty cool. But once I take the benefit of a, of an, of, of a goal, this goal goes into play in my tableau. Now, once it's in play in my tableau, I'm on the hook for completing it. If I don't complete it, I lose three points. If I do, I gain five points, okay? However, if I never play this goal, ever in the game for its effect, then at the end of the game, I can choose if I want to or not complete the goal for points. So goals are a kind of a risk reward, but they're very interesting. So they have different effects. But in general, this means the liberator San Francisco. This means having one of each cattle. And this means having one building and two blue teepees. So you see, it's pretty easy to see, but I want to show you an example of something that can happen um, in the game. Let's say I ended up with two San Francisco's. Now, I have to meet each goal independently, which means I have to deliver San Francisco not once, but twice to meet both goals. So if I met one of the goals and not the other one, I only delivered San Francisco once, I would only get five points from one, I'd lose three points from the other if I played them. It's also important to note with cattle. This says it specifically wants one of the breeding value threes, one of the breeding value fours, and one of the breeding value fives. Well, if I had another goal that required cattle, let's see if I could pull one up. Um, I would have to have, boy, I would have to, for instance, in this one, I would have to have another five cattle. It doesn't count for both, okay? That's a really important thing to understand. A lot of new players mess that up, but that's important to get. So, same thing with hazards. Every time you see this hazard symbol, you have to have a different hazard to meet each goal. And that's basically how the goals work. And as we go throughout the game, we'll see more of the goals. So, let's see here. With that, with that being done, uh, let me see if there's anything else I haven't covered on the board. So essentially, again, um, we're going to be able to, whoops, let me just move these back. We're gonna be taking movements to move spaces, taking the actions on the spaces, and then once our cowboy makes it all the way to Kansas City, follow through these actions to put new tiles on the board, new people in the supply to be able to fly higher, gain the money for the breeding value of our, of, our, of, our, of our hand, and then finally make a delivery by using one of our cubes on a city. And we'll do that over and over again until the game finally ends when the market token is moved off the board. So looking forward to sharing this one with you. Go ahead, I'll be back. All right guys, that was, I know, a long play, uh, how to play with Bryn. Uh, we're excited to get to this game. Uh, thank you so much, Bryn, for yeah. that. Uh, it, it's a great game, I can't wait to play it. Uh, we're gonna reset up some of the cameras and then we'll be right back to play uh, the Great Western Trail with you. All right, so we will be right back.
welcome back to It's Your Turn. We're going to be playing now The Great Western Trail. Hope you uh, stuck around for my very lengthy and thorough explanation of the game. I hope I caught everything. It's a pretty detailed game and well worth it. But I want to show you something really cool before we start. Uh, before we do that, uh, real quick, uh -huh. uh, Steve, it's one of our favorite games as well. Absolutely. Yes. Now, okay, Bryn, show us. All right, all right. So get these. So in the game, the, the different tiles that come in the game have a one, two, or three printed on them. Now normally, these are put in face, these tiles are put in face down stacks that can easily fall over, right? So, uh, so Marco, while he was at uh, Board Game Geek uh, convention, the summer convention, yep. spring convention, he was able to buy these bags for one, two, and three, and these are just fantastic. Now I wish I knew where to get them, but I think the BGG store yeah, has them, right? It was actually, the BGG store had them uh, off in the back. Yeah. And I just happened to see this little bin that said Great Western Trail. That's right. And then those were inside of it. And so this is the first time we're using them. I'm so excited. I don't have to like worry about knocking over stacks of tiles. That's right. So so yeah, these are great and they're part of setup and whatever. They're just really cool. And, and Mar Marco's going to cover that throughout the game. Okay. So as usual, when we do It's Your Turn, I'm going to be the first player. And we're going to look at kind of like what's my strategy going to be. So we're going to spend a lot of time not only on this board here, but we're also going to spend a lot of time here. And I'm going to show you what I have set up in this area here. So we've got my hand, so you can see what my hand is at any given time, my buildings that I haven't built, the current goals that are available to me in the game, and the cattle markets all right there. So um, you'll be able to see very easily what's going on in the game. Now at the beginning of the game, I started out with, can you see this okay? I started out with a goal. Every player is given a goal, and notice how a different color than the other, the other ones, given a goal. Now this goal is great because it starts in play and doesn't have negative points on it. So what it says is I need to build a building, get a, uh, a four cow, which is one of the browns, or I, and get at least one of the three cows, which are the red, yellow, or white. I mean, red, yellow, or blue. So I'm gonna try to focus on this goal first and see where my game goes from there. So let me go and take this back, and with that in mind, I'm gonna take my first turn. So during the first turn of the game, um, everybody received a certain amount of, of, of coins. Okay, I have six coins to be able to spend. Um, so you also see in my hand, I've got to, uh, two of the white cows. Well, it makes sense for me to immediately go to this first space, discard one of the white cows, goes in a face-up discard pile, I gain two coins, which I'll gain here for a total now of eight. And I'm gonna go ahead and buy one of the, uh, buy, I'm gonna go and hire one of the people. I'll go ahead and put my guy like that so you can more easily see what's below it. So, um, because I know I'm gonna have to be building this game, I'm actually gonna pick up this builder. He's gonna cost me six. So I'm gonna pay six coins, into the bank and put him right here on my play mat. I'll show you on the play mat. Right here on the play mat, you see now I have two builders. So we know already that once I'm able to take building actions, I'll be able to build more levels of buildings than say Marco will. And so, and that would end my first turn. That's how quick and easy this game can be to play a single turn. Yep, and I'm actually basically gonna do the same thing. Uh, Steve, I just saw your comment. Uh, I hope you enjoy them as much as we're about to. Uh, let us know what you think uh, in the comments. Yeah, that's great. All right, so, Brent, if you could move me over. Yep, right more. here. And I have nothing <laughs> Wait, to Wait, what is this? What is this? Is this that's, that's right. This broke back map. <laughs> there we go. All right, there we go. Broke back trail right there. I don't know. All right. All right, I'm going to buy one for six. Okay, right over great. Here. And I'm going to buy the engineer. Okay, so he's, gonna, he's got the engineer, which means he can start doing his rail lines as well. Right, but the action that's on the tableau. I'm going to show you Bryn's tableau right here. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's do it this way. Okay. Great. Yeah, right. we can see it. So way. if you see, it's one jersey lets you bring down your ribbons down by one. You can increase your ribbons by one right. space. Yeah, but, but unfortunately, I don't have any jerseys. So what ends up happening is, if you'll hand me your, your, your engineer, yep. is he'll place his engineer in this space, which is great. He still gets the point of having a double engineer, but he doesn't get to benefit from the one-time action that's right. there. So here you can have that guy back. Thank so, you. Okay, great. And as you see with the engineers, there's lots that benefit from having extra jerseys in your hand. So just something to consider as you're picking up engineers. All right, hey, so great. back to the board. So that's great. So now we're looking at the main board here again, and we're gonna look at some of our spaces. Now I can move up to three spaces. Now I wanna mention one more thing that's important. On the first turn of the game, I could have gone anywhere I wanted to. The reason I chose, and that's a, that's, I didn't explain at the beginning, but the first turn, I could have like started here if I wanted to. The reason I started here was because I specifically had an extra white cow that I wanted to cycle out of my hand in hopes of getting, you know, a black cow so I could have them the highest breeding value. 
but I could have started anywhere I wanted. But in future rounds, you always start at the beginning here on the little on the little cowboy, and then you move across the board yes. there. So I can now move up to three spaces. Let me do so let me just find out what my next card is, and it's a second jersey. So I've got two jerseys. That's not great for me. I want to be able to get those jerseys out of my hand. Um, and I have no and I only have two coins. So going to this space doesn't make much sense. It's basically a train movement for an engineer and a double gear action. I don't even have those. I can't afford a cow. I have no black to, black cows to discard, but I can make use of this action for just getting money. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Now there's little arrows. I don't know if you can see them. The little arrows that take you throughout the game. So right here, I can discard two of the same color for four coins. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to discard two jerseys and uh, go ahead and take four coins, which brings me back up to six. Now I can sh choose to spend seven for a hazard. I only have six, so I can't do that. My turn is over. All right. Okay. And now I am going to go to the second space because now I have a second engineer. Okay. I'm going to get my train going. Yep. So he can now right. move his train up so two up spaces. To, up to, so and remember that we said up to two spaces. Up to two spaces, right. It can be one or two. Right. Or zero, technically two. If you I mean, two. Okay. I guess. Okay. And, and now I'm going to do the gear action. And I am going to... And remember at the beginning of the game, you have access to two gear actions at the beginning of the game, and only one on, on one side. I'm going to get that's money. Updated. That's what I'm going to yeah, get. Yeah, you can the get reason, a coin. The reason for it is I do have a double of something. Actually, I have triple <laughs> of something. <laughs> Whatever, that seems like a reasonable reason. And there's no reason. All right, so okay. here we go. Back to Bryn. So here we go. So when we look at my hand that was drawn just a moment ago, um, I, I, I'll, I'll bring it up in the camera for you. We've got... We've got a green, two whites, and a black here. So whenever it's my turn, we're going to try to show you both boards at once. And whenever it's Marco's, I'll come back and talk to you directly. But we've got to make an action. Is I can't get rid of another white cow. I'm going to get stuck with it no matter what I do unless I take a gear action to cycle it. But I do want to show you right now, I've got a breeding value of six, and that's pretty dang good. Um, I can only possibly get it to seven. So if I move here, I can move my breeding value up or take a goal. Uh, but I can move it to three spaces and can eventually get over there. Well. Do I want to risk getting rid of the green cattle to build? Well, building's part of what I'm going to do. So you know what? I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to discard this. This Actually, you know what? I don't have to discard the green cattle. Here's something that's good about it. Discarding this green cattle gets me two coins, OK? Two coins. But when I turn it in um, and sell it at sell, you know, for the breeding value, it's still worth two coins. So getting rid of it doesn't make any sense right now unless I need the money for a building. And I don't. I have six coins. So I'm going to go and spend four coins. So I've got a five. I'll spend four coins, and I can pick up a, a, a level two building, which would be this one right here. Now this one allows me to use cowboys to cycle my hand, and it lets me move three more spaces and take another action. That's really cool. So um, I need to put this in a place where it's going to be a choke point, where we know he's going to go, and where ultimately, because he has to pass it and pay me money every time he passes it. So I'm going to place this in one of the best choke points of all, that leads right here, and which leads to the next building action. So now, any time that he passes this space, he'll have to pay me two coins if he has them. Alternatively, though, he can go around me and completely miss, the, miss, miss that opportunity. That's right, I could. Yep, at least until there's more hazards that come in the game that block it. All right, and that is my action. All right, so I'm going to go one, two. Okay, so right now he's moving around the board. He is ended up on the same space I took a moment ago. Right, and I'm selling two. Two black Anguses, okay. Two black Anguses. You skipped buying cattle. Well, here's the thing. All right. Uh, I couldn't afford it. Okay, oh, even if you sold one, you only yeah. got two money. Oh, you didn't have enough money. Okay, great. All right, so, so he's in that. He gets four. four coins. Okay. And uh, that would be it for you, right? Yeah, you want so buy that, I'll just draw back up okay. to my hand limit. Great. Well, there's not much else I want to do because I don't really want the TPs. They're not worth any money yet, and I don't have a goal involving TPs. Let's go ahead and deliver our cattle. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to go to step one. Now, step one, I have a choice of two hazards I can put out. The two hazards I can put out are in the desert area or the mountain area. Well, since I don't want him to take the mountain pass, I want him to go through me, I'm going to go ahead and place this hazard in his way. After that, you know, I really want more builders, so I'm going to bring more builders into the game, which is going to move down the market token. And I'm going to bring in another builder into the game, which goes here. Now, because we're playing a two-player game, we're only going to use these two rows of, of columns. A three-player game would use this one, and a four-player game uses the entire grid. Right. So this will move down fairly quickly in the game. But now we've got some more builders available for me to be able to use. So that was step three. Step four now is I, I, get, I gain my breeding value of my hand. So if we look here, I have got a breeding value of six. Now, regardless if I use all six in delivery, I still get six coins. So I'll go ahead and take my six coins for the breeding value. 
I didn't have any purple ribbons to use. So what happens is now the whole hand gets discarded. It's gone. It's out of the game. I'll have to draw a new hand in a moment. But now we're going to take step five, which means I can deliver someplace that's up to six away. So I'm looking at the board, and I would very much like to, um, to not spend as much of my money right now. So I'm actually going to deliver to Wichita, which will only cost me one coin. So one coin will go back. And the reason it costs one coin is because Wichita is a four. I can deliver to Colorado Springs if I want to. But for every railroad crossing between my train, whoops, sorry, I didn't mark your train around, um, between my train and the destination, I have to pay a coin. So I paid my one coin. Now I get to put a disc there. So as far as the disc I want to put there, I'm not going to be going too many engineers. I would like to be able to get more money for building, so I'm going to use the double. I'm going to put that for double money, and that is my first turn. All right, so I am going to go. He comes back to the beginning, and I draw a new hand. Only uh, I'm going to go up one again. So if you could move me over, Brent. Okay. And I'm going to increase my breeding value. My breeding value. Now this is a space because you can increase your breeding value here, or you can take gold. Um, from the goal, from the goals that are available, and then he can of course move his train again. And I'm moving my train again. All right, so he moves his train up uh, up to two. Yep. All right, great. So when he makes his first delivery, he's probably going to make quite a bit of money doing it because he's not going to pay for all these um, right. railroad crossings on the way. All right, Brent. So it's back to me. I'm back at the beginning again. Notice my hand. I have two Dutch two Dutch belts, uh, black Angus and a Jersey. Well, I really want some cattle. If you remember my goal, my goal was to get different kinds of cattle. There's cattle available. Let's go get some cattle. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I've got here seven coins. I really wouldn't mind having that cowboy that costs six. So even though I don't have an, a white to do, uh, you know what? Let's try it. Let's go ahead and go here. I don't have a white to discard. That's fine. But I can go in. I can go and hire somebody. So I'm going to spend six right here, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up this cowboy, which goes onto my flame mat. Now, you'll notice that the building I built also benefits to have cowboys. So I'm getting kind of a double benefit of building the cowboys. I can get them, not only use them to get better deals on the cattle, but I can also use them to cycle my hand. Great. All right, so now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Brenton is really trying to, well, actually, geez. Okay, so there's a big difference in this game that isn't there in uh, three player or four player. Okay, what's I'm going to show Brenton's board real quick. And that is the hand cost. That's right. In three to four player games, this is only one against right. you. While this is a black two. hand is two. In a four player game, it's reversed. Right. But in a two player game, they're both negative two. So this is going to be great. I want so some money. So I, I have to go Bryn's route. Okay, yeah. Well, he could go this way and pay four coins to the bank, or he can go my way and pay two coins to me. It's up to him how he wants to handle that. Uh, I'm going to pay four coins to the bank. Oh! <laughs> I'm not giving Brent so, any advantage But that only here. lets you move three. None. But that, each one of these discounts kind of has a space, yep. so he's got to go one, two. The first disc he can go is here. Right. And now, that's if exactly he wanted to, doing. let me explain. If he wanted to, he could stop on the hazard and take a single gear action if he wanted to. But, you know, he's going here to discard one of his greens if he wanted to okay. for two coins. All right. And I am going to put down... Oh, he's going to buy a building. Okay. So yep. he's, he has the same buildings I have. Okay. We both have the same buildings in the game. I want to show you something while he's making a decision. Now, each each building has is double-sided. It has an A side and a B side and a number. Now, at the beginning of the game, we randomized which side of each of the 10 buildings we would use. And that's and we both now have the same set. All right. So, so yeah. if we want to go into a little bit more detail, Brent, if you want to explain this little action. Excellent, I sure will. Right here. Now, this is very hard to see, but some of the spaces that are past major hazard routes, okay, have an extra bonus feature. What that means is when the when the player who owns the space goes and takes an action there, they can not only do the actions here, but they can also take an additional action. Now this action here, it's very hard to read, but I'll tell you what it says. He can discard any color or cow he wants and move his um, his his uh, breeding value up one. The, the the purple Rubens, he can move it up one space. And he can do that only once. He can't just keep discarding cows, but it's an extra action he can do in that space. And you'll see throughout the game board, there's more of those spaces in the game. Now, you said when I use the action, do I get to also use it when I first build there as well? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. So that's exactly what well, I'm Well, not when you build there. Sorry, when you go there. You have right. to take the action there. So. Yeah. All right, so um, there's one more thing I have to explain. You'll notice that this has some empty spaces, and we have these bags. So the one bag has the ones, the two bag has the twos, and the three bags has the three. So every time we finish this, we refill the board. And so we see a black TP came, a blue TP came into the game. Um, we see there's going to be from the two, a, another cowboy is going to possibly come into the game if we, right. if we add them to the job market. 
and there's going to be uh, another, another cowboy. cowboy potentially added to the job market. So each time we deliver, we will do this process. Right. Okay, great. So um, you've now built a building, right? Yeah. Or were you, yeah, you built this building here, and so you're all set. So it's back to my turn. Now the thing is, I really want to buy cattle. I've only got one coin because he chose not to pay me yep. the one coin. So I, need, I only have two greens. Now I could discard both those greens for four coins, which is something to do, or I can possibly cycle later on here to build a building. So I really want to buy cattle. Hold on, I feel like I need to turn this cup around because I am not trying to no political no political agenda. No, no agendas here. <laughs> that's my cattle. Right? That's, that's my that's mine. All right, well I'm going to go here, and here's why I'm going there. It's got the double gear action, which is something I really want right now, because the double gear action is going to let me get two money. Or that's something I just opened up. So I'm going to move my train up one space. I'm going to go ahead, to go ahead and take two, uh, two coins for a total of three. So now I've got the three that I need to be able to buy the cattle that I want at, after this round. All right, it's my and uh, and that's it for me. All right, so you know what? I'm just going to end it out. Okay, so we're so going to go to Kansas in. City, show you the steps. He's going to choose one of the things to put down. He's going to put down a TP. Of course, he doesn't want to put down that hazard. Nope. He's going to add a... Uh, an engineer to the market, and he's going to add a build, and he's going to add a builder, or a, they're called craftsmen in the game, but right. basically builders to the market. What's your breeding value? All right, so my breeding value is six. So he's a six. He can possibly have a seven if he spends his um, his his purple. Which he has I'm one not. purple ribbon. He's not going to. So he's going to get six coins right. for that. So I'm going to deliver to Colorado Springs. Okay, and okay, so he's going to deliver to Colorado Springs here. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between Colorado Springs and his 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 current train position is two. So instead of gaining six coins, he'll basically gain six and then put back two. So he'll right. gain a total of four. Now, there's no situation in the game where you won't have enough money to deliver because you always gain more money than there, than there are railroad crossings. However, it can really um, sink you as far as how much money you gain. So it's always good to at least move your train somewhat, even if you don't intend to play the full uh, train delivery game. No, Sean, I am not... I'm not producing milk. I know it's another <laughs> cow game. I think this is like our third cow game in a row. No, I'm not producing milk. <laughs> Hallmark of Euros. Hallmark of Euros. Okay. That's right. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go here to this space here. Now, I can turn this black um, Angus for two coins, but I don't want to because, again, I can use it and to turn it for breeding value, but I can, buy, I can buy cattle. Now, if I go to the cattle market, I can buy any colored um, either red, yellow, or, or, or blue cow I want, the three breeding value cows for three coins. I have exactly three coins, that's what I'm gonna do. So what I've got access to, I'm gonna show them the cows over here if we can point if we can point our board right over here at the camera right here. So I wanna show you something. Now the, the, the yellows and the blues are identical to each other, okay? So are the reds. But the brown ones actually are different. While they all have a breeding value of four, they have variable number of points. So this one's a five point cow, whereas that one's a three. So priority on this is really important. So um, this same thing with the purples, they'll have different point values per cow. So right now I've got to decide if I want to get a yellow cow or a blue cow. Now what would make me make a difference because one's one point, one's three. There are sometimes buildings that interact with certain colors of cows. However, in this game, there aren't any. So it doesn't make sense for me to take anything other than this blue cow. So when I take this blue cow, it goes into my discard pile to eventually be cycled into my hand. And that is my action. All right, so I am back at the beginning. And you know what? Do I have any money to sell things? All right, um, so he's trying to decide right now, um, which I, he has to start at the you know beginning what? again. No. He can move to three spaces. I'm just going to go here. He's going over here. He can move his train again. All right, and I'm going to go into the station. Okay, so he can move up to two, but he's going to choose to move one space and stop so he can right. take a station action. So and the first I'm thing about a station to action is he's got to spend two coins to put this token down. Again, you're only allowed one chip per, per space. Um, that'll get him one point into the game. Now he can choose to take the station uh, manager by, by placing one of his people right here, which he did, and now he gets this. Now that's gonna give him two coins immediately. At the end of the game, he'll gain one point for every person he hires. Right, and so I basically just picked that up for cost of, I mean, I put a new disc down for cost of nothing. That's Because I, I, I got it, you know, an even exchange out of it. Yeah, it cost two. I didn't two, lose the two. guy, so I guess you can technically say I did lose six well, money. One of the benefits of losing the engineers, though, the, the train guys, you notice they have those a bunch of those one-time benefits. So you lose them, you put them back on, you gain the one-time benefit All again. Right. So I'm going to so do the gear action. The gear, he has a double gear action. Move me back twice. Now, he could have taken this in any order he wanted to, but he chose specifically this order. So he's going to take the bottom action, which let's show my board so yeah. I can show them what that is. So he's going to take the bottom action, and he actually has this full action completely revealed, which he just revealed. He can move his train back up to two times and permanently remove two cards from his hand, from his game. They don't get discarded. They're out of the game. Right. So they don't even come back in the cycle. So, so what I'm saying, to, hey, Jersey. 
You're done. You're out of my dick. So uh, he's uh, he just threw away some jerseys. They're gone now. They won't go into his discard pile. They don't get cycled in. You start with five, which means he's got three left. So uh, that's a good thing, I think. So let's go ahead and move on with my turn then. Oh, are you kidding me? That good, huh? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do my, my really cool action here, which I just got access to, which is right here. It's one, two. Now in this action, first of all, however many cowboys I have, I can spend them to draw cards and then discard. Well, I've got two cowboys, so I can draw two cards, which is what I'll do. I'll draw two. And now I can discard any two cards I want. So looking at what's coming up, I'm going to be able to sell a green cow, which is what I want. So let's go ahead and discard these, the, at least a jersey and a black Angus so I have a little more diversity. Now what I'm hoping for is this will be a white cow. However, I can look at my discard pile and I can see that all the white cows are gone. I only had three and there's two, right? There's three of them right there. So it doesn't matter what that is. The important thing is, is that I'm only going to have a breeding value no matter what I do, probably a five. So now that I've gone there and I've done the, the cycling action, I can now move up to three spaces and take that action. Now, notice that because it has a three movement and it's, and, it's, and it's filled in. Now some of the action spaces that you'll see like on these cards will have a three and it's hollowed out. That means I can just move three spaces. I don't get to take the action there. These actually let you get to move and then take an action. The problem is I have no money at all. So the best I could possibly do is go here, get two money for one of the greens, which is good, and then take a build action. Or I can go here and take a TP and ultimately get, another, get a gear action. Or I can just go deliver. I think what I'll do is just to maximize on my, on my, on my income and possibly build another building is go ahead and go here. I'll go ahead and spend this last, this, this, green, this green cattle to take two coins. And I can build up to one level of building. So I can turn my really cool uh, level two building into a level three building. Um, but that's not exactly what I want, but I wouldn't mind having another way to be able to do some more actions. So right now, um, uh, there's a lot of different possible buildings here. This is a nice one for building up money. So this one here says, and I'll show it to you, says, if I put this on a space um, it said, and I take this action, um, it says that I can gain two coins for every building I have on a forest space. Well, the first place I built was a forest space, so I can put this on another forest space, which can go right here, which will allow me then, it creates another, uh, another uh, what's it called, choke point. However, he's got a way around it, but it is, it is there for that benefit. In fact, actually, I think what I might do is uh, if I put this here, I can immediately go from this space to this space, gain a lot of money just prior to building again. And that might be what I want to do, unless I want to make sure I've got money for buying cows. You know what? This seems like a good idea. I'm going to do right. that. Great. All right. So I am going to go up to my cost, newly built. And that costs my two, my two one. Money. Okay. And as you can see, my newly built one lets me sell two cattle uh -huh. right there. Same so cattle. two more jerseys. Uh huh. No, no, sell, not discard. Yeah, uh, sell, that's yeah, all right. Sell. So he threw those in the discard pot. Just take those out of the game. We'll go somewhere else. So we don't. Yeah, definitely, whenever you throw away a card, <laughs> don't get anywhere near where you're playing. Now, again, same thing. I get to move forward. Oh, wait, wait. One. You get to do this too? Oh, that's you right. You can discard any car, any cow of any color to move another up. Another jersey. Another jersey to move up his, uh, his, uh, his uh, perfect. purple tokens. So, yeah. His purple right. ribbons. Now I'm going to go here. So that lets him move another space, and so now he can go take the cow action. Now, mind you, I can't redraw my hand until the end of the turn, uh, my round. Mm -hmm. I mean, my turn. And the reason for it is, is exactly because of this. You don't want to have a player who is selling everything, yep. drawing it back up, and then oh look, I get to move again. Exactly. Let me sell some it's more. very important to understand you never draw up until the end of the round um, unless a specific card tells you to. But right. There's not many that do that. All right. So I'm going to buy some cattle for six. Okay. So he's only got one cowboy. So he can either add two cattle to the deck, buy a, a three breeding cow for six, or buy a brown cow for 12. Give me that blue three. Okay. So he's I got the, the blue, blue three. three. It's gone. So there's no more blues in the game. All right. And that's my turn. Okay. Great. Now, at the end of my round, I was supposed to draw again. And as we predictably see, I've got. Um, I've got a breeding value of five, which isn't great, and I don't have any way to raise it up. So it looks like I might be taking some losses here um, for that. So let me see if there's anything else that I can do that might help me mitigate the loss. Now, I have the ability to cycle my hand, which by going here, I can cycle my hand because this gear action lets me take a gear action. I have a default gear action where I can draw one and discard one, but that's going to be a random card from this entire deck, and I would specifically have to get either that white or that blue to improve my fate. So that's a big risk, and it's a whole action to do it. I don't know that it's worth it, so let's go ahead and just uh, take my licks and go ahead and go 
to uh, to, to to the breeding thing. So we're gonna go ahead and go here. I definitely want to put down a hazard in the way of his spot. Of All right, let's go here, and um, we got a lot of we got a lot of people out there. Let's go ahead and put down a cowboy, make make cattle even cheaper potentially. So that moves the, that moves down the market value token, and I wouldn't mind having another TP out there potentially for right. money gains. So here, I got my breeding value of five. I'll gain five coins. I can now deliver up to five away. Well, I've already taken Wichita. I can't deliver there again. That is just no fun for me. Um, I've got to make a different decision. So uh, I either have to go to Topeka and lose three points in the game and draw a goal, or go to Kansas City, gain six coins, and lose six points at the end of the game. Now, I'm tempted. The money would be really useful for me. So I'm going to do the crazy action of actually taking uh, the hand cycling space and putting on Kansas City. And that's going to get me six coins immediately. Notice there's no rail cars between Kansas City or my thing, so I don't have to pay any money. There's no uh, uh, of these of these crossing lanes. So uh, that means I get to, I'm now walking out of there with, with, with 11 coins, which is not a bad, you know, kind of jump start to my, to my game. So I was going to put you back at the start again. All right, so I want you uh, to take a look at something real quick, everybody. You see this over here and then these guys mm -hmm. as we put them out. This is actually your timer of how the game, how long the game lasts. That's right, sure is. You know, and so you can effectively choose to elongate the game by putting out the hazards or the teepees. Yep. Or you can shorten the, shorten the game by putting out more people as quickly uh -huh. as possible. Yep. And the twos always have people on it, so it ensures the game will always move forward. But the threes have a choice of people or teepees, right. and the ones are always not people. So just understand that's kind of the layout of the. Of the All right, so. Times. What would you like and to do? You got your nobody cattle. is Bryn oh. going to screw me in this time. Well, you know what? So I'm going to explain something to him while he's deciding. So when I completed that, I my deck's done. It was all discarded. So what happens in a typical deck builder is the same thing here. We're going to shuffle the deck, and then I'm going to redraw up to my hand of four. So um, now what I really want is a breeding value of 10. The reason why is because that lets me put my first black disc down, which is some of those powerful abilities in the game, including moving more spaces, um, including more victory points at the end of the game, and including increasing your hand size, which can be really huge. So we're going to cycle this, and I'm going to go ahead and do one, All two, right, so three, as you four. see, I moved. I'm going to go down one more ribbon, and I'm going to move my train forward up one. Okay, so train forward up one, you're back to four? Yep, back okay, to four, and I'm done. All right, so I've got decisions to make here. So I've got a lot of money. Um, the question is, do I want to go for cattle, um, which probably won't hit my hand anytime soon because I've got, I just, I just shuffled. Or do I want to go for um, for more people and more building? So right now, uh, based on what's out there, I've got a lot of money. Let's go ahead and go here. Um, I don't need the money right now. That the two right now, um, considering what I have, I can buy up to two people. Now two uh, buy people. I'm sorry, I can hire up to two people. So there's what is this, slavery over here? <laughs> it's terrible, right? But um, right here, these are both worth. Now this is the cheapest they get in the game, I believe, is that or until the end, they're fives. So basically, I can hire one for five and one for seven. Well, that's exactly twelve. I have 11. So if I wanted both of the, if I wanted to hire both of them, then uh, I could do that, but it's gonna cost me all of my money, and I still need some for cattle. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit cautious here. Having three cowboys to me is better than none. Um, let me see if there's a benefit, yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend five, go ahead and take this cowboy here, add him to my tableau, giving me a total of three cowboys now, and that will be my action, so I'm done. All right, so right. going back to me. Oh, look at the danger zone. I'm gonna go your route. Okay, it's gonna cost you four. No, actually, to no, me. no. I'm yeah, gonna I made go, it quite I'm gonna go the longer okay. route. <laughs> okay, okay. Because all I have is one money. Oh, <laughs> so he can continue to move. Now he moved three spaces. One, two, three. So he's yep. now over here. And I'm selling a green. Okay. The Dutch belt for two. Okay. And I'm gonna build another building. All right, boy, we're both building lots of buildings this game. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that. Oh. He, You've got one builder, okay. Yep. Yep, let's see what she can do. All right, I'm gonna build this. Okay. And I'm and, gonna okay. try to slow He's you down. He's gonna create another cattle space. So he'll have two spaces, not only the general space you can buy cattle, but he'll have to create his own cattle space as well with his building. So let's see, what's she gonna do? Yeah, let's see, the cattles are right there. So uh -huh. cattles right here in the middle of the board. Do I wanna do it in the beginning or later on? That's really the question I'm, I'm mm -hmm. thinking here. Well, the thing about that space is, is it allows you to discard a white cattle for four coins. And there's already a white cattle here for two. So if he wanted to, he could, he could put it at the beginning 
and create a situation where he can choose which one he wants to deliver white, or if he has two whites or three, he can. Like deliver I said, Brent likes to talk a lot. I do like to talk a lot. If you got the, if you went through the getting to know, he's trying to manipulate. At this the, moment. Actually, the truth is, um, I'm more interested in teaching you how to play the game than I am in winning it. Clearly, or I would, or I would have won every game already. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> how, how many of these games have you won in Bear Asking Trails lately? Uh, not so many on this game. <laughs> I've actually, been trying some crazy strategies right here. Okay. Again, it's just going to be in front of you. Okay, that's it's fine. S to slow him down. It's right. another space I have to go on. Okay. Right. Great. So and you, and, uh, and did that, did that cut, did you pay your two coins? Yeah, I'm going to pay my two. Great. Okay. Well, I can move up to three. And I made a mistake. <laughs> what would you like to do? No. No? no. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move my three. So there's one, two, three. Now, I don't have a black cut to, um, to discard. However, I have three cowboys, which lets me buy two for five. We're one of the browns for six. Well, I happen to have exactly six coins. I'm going to use them to pick up the five-point brown cow, add them to my deck, and that is my action. I don't know about brown cow. Uh, yep. All right, I'm going to actually go here. The next one, I'm not going to deliver just yet. Okay. So because he's I'm going to pick this up because I need it for my. He got a TP. Goal. Great. So his goal required a green TP. A green TP was on the board. They gave him two coins, so he took it. All right, and then I'm going to use the action, and I'm going to. He's got a double one. gear action now, so he's going to do the draw two or draw one, discard one. You know, the time in which I need the jerseys, they're not coming out. Well, you got rid of two of them. <laughs> I mean, so there we go. So let me tell you your dimensions of your hand, beginning or the the denominations of your hand. You actually start the game with. Three, five jerseys and then three of each of the other colors. So it's not a bad idea to remove some at the beginning of the game, but if you're going to play engineers, there's a lot of jersey spaces you want to use. So it's not usually a good idea to get rid of all your jerseys or too many jerseys at the beginning of the game. Right. And Great. Sean, yes, you won the last time we played. <laughs> we know you won. It was your first time playing anyone. It was beginner's that's, luck. That's, no, no he, he did a great job. It was a good game. I all feel right. like he shafted me. I think I think you're reading too much into it. Here we go. We're gonna go over here now This is where this action really becomes great for me because now however many cowboys I have is how much I can cycle so I can draw up to three now because I got three cowboys So one two three add them to my hand now. We've got some diversity now. I can discard now I can discard three well um, Let's discard one of these jerseys. Let's discard one of the white ones I don't need that and you know what let's discard this green one here uh, for giving my breeding value of seven now that at least let me get to Colorado Springs which is somewhat of the way where I want to go, but I was really hoping that blue cow would have come up. Okay, now I get to move immediately to another space. So I can either go here and go and go try to build, but I'd rather have some money first. So this space right here, because I have two buildings on uh, on on four spaces, will get me four coins, which will help me build next turn. So there's my four coins I needed, and that's it. All Oops, right, that's so three four coins. Whoops. And there you go. Here. Yep. I am going. You know, let's. Let's keep this going. Oh, he's adding the TP there. He's adding another uh, craftsman into the game. Actually, um, that was taken by oh, me. Okay. You actually put it there. Okay, and great. And then another TP. And another TP. Great. All okay. right, I have six. Okay, pretty value of six. I'm going to use so he gets two ribbons. So he'll get. He get. He's pretty value eight now. So he gets eight coins immediately. Yep. So he discards his whole hand. Okay, he gains eight coins, and that's part of this step. Now, would you like to deliver to Santa Fe? Uh, yes, that's why. Okay, I great. It. So um, he gets to place one of his white discs on Santa Fe. There you go. Now I want to show you something. First of all, he's got to pay the difference. So his his trains here one, two, three crossings. So he has to pay back three coins to deliver there. Now because he met these two goals, he now these these two conditions, he now gains what's in the middle, which is draw a goal. All right, and I'm so, going to get the one with the two TPs. So on. there's a goal here with two TPs and a building. All right, just to show you. Yep. Right there. And uh, yeah, so that goes remember, that goes into his deck. It doesn't go to his hand. If he draws it later and he decides to play it for its one-time effect, then he's under contract basically to complete it for the end of the game or he'll lose points. So right now, it doesn't really hurt him, but it, is, it does kind of fill up your deck a little bit. Now, he can use that ability to discard cards permanently to discard that. So that's, a, that's another thing you can do with extra goals. Okay, great. So you're all done? All done. All right, so we're going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and build. Now, I've got four coins. I've got exactly two builders, which is, which is all I need to be able to do to be able to build up to a level two building. So let me see, what do I want to build? More cattle would probably help me out. You know, but you, know, you know how I was crying that I need more jerseys? Well, they all just came right back into my head. <laughs> Those jerseys are spiteful what because a, I got rid of their friends. What great timing, okay. Well, I wouldn't mind being able to move a little bit and trade in two cows for one might be a really good thing for me. Um, so I'm gonna build this level one building. I'm gonna build it right here. That'll let me make some last minute money right before I go deliver uh, cattle there. And it's again on a forest space, which helps me 
you know, once again, uh, with this card, with this token, which like, gives me more money for the more forest bases I'm on. So that's going to be the building on the build, and that's my, that's two of my coins. So I'm done. All right. Here we okay. go. I'm going to go to the first base. Okay. So he's going back here. He can discard a white right. if he has one. I'm trying to decide. I mean, it's really just. Oh, perfect for seven. I just okay. noticed the engineer was out there. All right, he's gonna take an engineer for seven. All right, and I do have a jersey this time. And you have a jersey, so since he built an engineer, he can discard a jersey right now to raise to raise his um, his breeding value up one. You know, right. Via the purple ribbons, so um, that's great. So now, and, did you, and you spent that earlier when you went to, to eight, right? Right. Okay, great. So he's got he's back up to two again. All okay, right, great. and there I'm done. Okay, great. So for me now, I've got some choices. Now there is a green TP out. Oh, one thing to note. A new goal always comes out whenever we complete the other goals. Now, we've got three San Francisco goals out there right now, which is not what we're used to seeing. No. So, um, can we make, oh, we've got, we've got it there, great. Okay, great, so um, now I'm interested in this goal because I'm starting to get some more cows. Now, granted, I've met my goal at this point. I have at least one building. I have each of these types of cows. So if I want to take this goal too, I would need to get even more cows, but that's kind of the direction I'm going in the game. So uh, let's go ahead and pick up the TP, because it's, gosh, two more this green TP is worth four coins so I'll take the green TP it goes into my tableau area I'll take four coins I've got five here and I can take a row action now my row action is to cycle my hand which could get me to bring value eight because right here as you can see I have a seven but I've got a blue in here somewhere so I could draw two and then discard down to two or I can take the two coins I'm gonna go ahead and take the risk I'm gonna go ahead and draw two and there's that blue I've been looking for so um, blue I'm gonna keep, the jersey's going away, and this extra green's going away. My breeding value is now a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I now got the eight breeding value I needed. So uh, that is, is that, wait, was that, that's not right. That's a nine breeding value, sorry. Nine breeding value, I got the eight I needed basically. So I am in a good spot to stop. So it's my turn, All right, I'm over. So I'm going to move to the one, one space up. Okay. And this actually improves my cell of whites. So yep. I get to sell it for four. Yeah, so a white cattle, you can get four coins now. All right. And now he can buy cattle if he wants to with this. Nope. But he's not going to. But he got he got four money, right? Yeah, but I do want to put with my cowboy two into the deck. So he can use his cowboy instead of buying cattle, he can add cows. So I'm gonna take two here from the cattle. Oh, wrong thing. That'd have been nice coming up next. Alright. Um where is the, oh there's the cows. There's the cows Great. deck. So, I'll so we got two. You can add two to the game. And let's take a look. It's gonna be a purple cow that's for six for five points and another yellow. Boy, that's terrible. Okay, so no, here we go. Yellow. No, it's just too many. You know, I wouldn't mind having one of them, but you know, they're only worth one point each. So, okay, so back to my turn. Now, here's where I'm at in the game. Um, I really wanted a breeding value of ten, right? I've only got a nine. I've only got a nine. I have the best possible hand I can have, but because I don't have any of the ability to to, I don't have any of the, the purple ribbons. I can't spend it to raise it to a ten. So we're just going to go ahead and go to the first one. I'm going to go ahead and put down another hazard in the way, blocking his way. He is such a we're oh. gonna add another. We're gonna add another cat, another cowboy here to the seven spot, and just in case he takes that one, we're gonna add another cowboy to the nine spot here. And so my breeding value, I've got a nine, so I'm gonna collect nine coins. So let's go ahead. I'll just go ahead and take ten and put one back. All right, and so I can deliver this all the way to Santa Fe, and that's what I'll do. So I'm going to take one of my tokens. You know, I really got in trouble last time for the breeding value thing, so I'll go ahead and unlock. If you look at my board real quick. I'm going to unlock this ability right here. It lets me move my train back one and spend a coin to move my breeding value up one, move these up one space, which would have really saved me this time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and put that here on Santa Fe. Now I don't have Colorado Springs, so I don't trigger anything from doing that. But And that is my uh, delivery. Now look at the difference between the train, one, two, three. So I got to spend three coins to do it to go there. But I'm still holding on 12, which is great. So here we go back to the beginning for me. All right, so back We're to the main We're moving right along. Right. So what I'm going to do is one, two, and three. Okay. I'm going to sell my black Angus. Okay. Two. And you can take a, and you can buy cows. And I am going to buy a cow here. All right. Which cow would you like to buy? Give me the yellow. All right. Bought a yellow for six. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> all right, and there we go. That's all well done. Okay. Oh, by the way, as soon as I sold these cows, they all go. They all get discarded. I have to draw out four more. So there's one, two, three, four. Boy, is that not terrible right there? I've got two black cows and two jerseys. Not a lot I can do. I do have a lot of money. The question is, do I want to get that last cowboy? It is. It is a. It is a six. 
I mean, it would be it would be four cowboys. Now, four cowboys gives me some options. It lets me buy a purple cow at the cheapest possible rate, which is only six, which would be great towards this goal. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get that. So I'm going to go here, spin the seven. Sorry, it costs seven for him. Okay, um, so spin seven and pick up this this guy right here and add him to my tableau. Now, when I add him to my tableau, I want to show you the effect. Uh, when I did my tableau, I immediately get to take a hazard for free. So, which hazard do I want to take? Well, I think I'll take. There's a three point. There's a four point hazards over here, but he's having to spend money going around that way. So I kind of want to leave him having to spend all that money. Um, I will, however, take this four point hazard here. So I will take this, and at the end of the game, that's four points for me. And I have a hazard in case I gain a goal that makes me have to get a hazard right. later. That's it. Okay. And four cowards. Right. So I am going to move up just one up to the cell oh, right two identical. Oh, two identical, right here, yeah. All right. Okay. So we can sell two identical cows for four. So two and jerseys. Buy, and he can buy a hazard, or he can remove a hazard uh, for I'm seven not. points. Nope. Uh, that's all I'm going to do. Nice and easy turn, right? Okay. Well, here's what I, I'm in good shape here because I'm going to go one, two, three right here. It lets me get rid of two of the same. Oh, real quick before I actually end in my turn. Okay. Well, actually, no, it has to be next turn. Yeah, it has to be next turn. He just drew, he drew a goal, and we'll get to that in yeah. a second. So I'm going to discard two of the same, which is these two, for three. So it's going to give me three coins. Okay. And then now. I get to move forward one space, which is exactly where I want to be. I can discard one of the Black Anguses for two more coins. No reason not to do that. And now I've got four cowboys to spend on a cow, on, on a on a, on a cattle market at cattle market action. So I already talked about wanting to, to wanting to buy one of the purple cows, and why not? Let's go ahead and do it. My hand's about to cycle. I'm about to draw up a new hand. There's a chance I'll actually draw it. So let's get it in my hand. So it's going to cost me six coins for it because I'm going to use all four cowboys to do it. And I'll take this six point cow and add it to my discard pile. And now I draw up. Now, when I draw up, I only have two cards left, which means this gets shuffled to add the extra card. I'm hoping that purple cow comes up really quickly. So um, shuffle, 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 cut, and then we'll get going. And that's my whole action there. All right, so I'm just okay. gonna move I got one, seven. Okay. one space up. Okay, one space up, back to here. Bring value up. Bring value up. Okay. Move my train up two. And your train moves up two. And so he, there's no reason for him to go back here again nope. unless he wanted to. So he's going to go one, two. He's going to make his way towards maybe the next station. That's right. And right. I'm also going to play now this goal because it was in my hand. Okay. So right. he's going to give me two money. Okay, two coins. So he's playing a goal in his hand. This is important. He drew it last turn. He's playing it. He gains two money for immediately. But now he's on the hook. He has to have a building, which he already does, and two blue teepees, yep. which he has one right now. So... Okay. All right. So it is your turn. Okay. Great. So um, for me, I'm going to go do my typical hand cycling thing because I want to be get it. So I've got four cowboys now. So why not? I'll draw four cards. You moved the wrong person. Oh, that is you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't want to do that. Actually, that does change things because I really want to move my breeding value up one, so I don't get stuck like I did last time. So that'll move my breeding value up one, and I get to move my train up only one. I don't have any engineers, so I'm not able to move it up a whole lot. But I'll stop there and do that action. It's my, it's your turn. All right. Now, who do you want to pay, me or the bank? Come on. Well, both the same, so I'm going to pay the bank. <laughs> of course you are. So one, two, three to the bank, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, one, two, three spaces. That takes you over to the building space. Got any greens and, you want to sell? You know, I'm thinking about it. All right. But I still can only ever build one. I love this and, game. And I have one more building, so you know what? I, yeah. Uh, so the thing is, because you can only move three spaces in the game, he's he's always going from here to there, or he's stopping on a space he can't use. So I can almost guarantee he's always going, going to go this space and this space. So if he doesn't have a green ready, it's not as good of a space for him. And if he's not going to go a building game, which it doesn't look like from all the people he's hired, um, right. this is all uh, the, the people, the no people I've hired. I'm basically creating useless actions for him. Now in the game, he has options to get out of this. Because um, in the game, if he can get to some of the black discs, he can start increasing you know the amount of space he I'm can move. I'm going to spend two. You know this spell I put down here? Okay. I'm going to replace it with a black hand. All right. So he's put a black hand right in my pathway to move through, which is going to cost me two coins each time. And, it, and it's the same building I had. Now, remember the rule is this. Um, it was a level one building. He can build up to one level by spending two coins because he has one engineer. Or, uh, sorry, one craftsman. So he can go from one to two. Now, he won't get the one point anymore, but you will get three points at the end of the game for right. that building. Great. And that's your building action, huh? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to do my typical thing. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and draw four cards out because I've got four cowboys to add to my hand. And that was a whole bunch of useless, but at least I got it. At least I, I cycled it, right? So uh, let's go ahead and remove these. <laughs> They're done. Um, it lets me move forward. I'm going to go ahead and go here to move forward, and I gain six coins now because I've got three buildings all on um, forest areas. So that's going to get me six coins immediately just for going to that space. 
All and right. that is my turn. So I'm just gonna move up one again. I'm not ru I'm not trying to rush the game. You know, I'm trying to play it in my own own speed. So I am gonna pick up a TP. Okay, there's a second blue TP. We'll get a coin for taking that TP. Yeah, Make just a training. one. And you get a double ge uh, gear rogue girl gear action. You want to remove some cards from your deck? Um, you know, I, I thought about that, but really, I want to see. Actually, just get another money. Why not? All right. All and right. Money, that's great. It. Okay, so now I'm in a I'm in a state again. I'm coming up to on delivery again. I have a seven. I have an eight. Now I can meet the Colorado Springs delivery, which would give me a goal, which would help me in, in what I'm doing. You know what? That's what I'm going to go ahead but and do. But it also lose him a point. It does lose me a point because of uh, here there's a there's a point loss between Wichita and Colorado Springs, but there's a goal between between Colorado Springs and Santa Fe, and the, there's the goal that I really won. So the question is, do I want to spend some of this ten money I have to build another building? to keep that going. I've only got two engineers, so I could raise a two building to a four, which I can discard any single cow for three, but I also gain, I also have to take goal. I'm not exactly excited about that. Um, I would like to get up to the five. So, I can move this building to, this building's been working so well for me for cycling my hand, so I don't really want to replace it, which would mean turning one of the ones into a three, which I think isn't a terrible idea if I want to eventually get to that five. So here we go. I'm going to go here. I can build up two levels of building, and I will. So that's going to cost me four money because I've got two builders. I'm going to take one of my level one buildings and turn it to a level three building. And unfortunately, this awesome building I just put down, I'm going to replace. But right now, that is what I feel like I need to do to maximize on my game. I don't really want this effect, and I'll show you what the effect does if you look at it. It lets me discard a black cow to move my breeding bike up to. That's not bad. It lets me get, for every engineer I have, I also gain a coin. It's not a terrible space. What I really want to get to is this five. This five says for every single, um, uh, what's it called? Um, tree. Tree that I'm on, right, that I have a building on. I get to move my train up one space, and it's a double hand, which means he has, he has to pay four to pass this space. So it's not a bad space in the long run for me. Okay, great. All right, so now I'm going to move up. I'm going to put the TP out. Okay. I'm going to... Okay, so he's, 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 he's delivering right now, cattle. I'm putting the cattle. Okay, so something cool happens with what he just did, and I'm going to explain it while he's doing his actions. He moved this token past a little yellow icon there, which means the cattle market refills. So the cattle market always refills to max. So we count the number of cattle, one, two, three, four. Now, the cattle market in a two-player game is always seven. So we're going to add three new cattle to the game to refill the market. Now this happens twice during the game. We're going to add a red, a blue, and a brown. Now the brown's worth four points. That's really good. And the red's worth two points. And the blue, another blue is worth three. So we now have all the colors of cattle leaves available for to us to buy. So, all right. And all right. So, in so now what's I'm your breeding value? My breeding value is nine. Ooh, he's got a breeding value nine. nine. He's got a breeding value ten. ten. He got it. So did you get your get your ten coins? All right. So ten coins okay, minus. Then. 10 coins, now he's going to deliver probably to Albuquerque, yep. am I right? So go ahead and put one of your black tokens in Albuquerque, and he'll pay two coins for doing All that. Right. So actually I'm going to pay seven because I'm increasing my hand limit. Yeah, let me show you what he's doing on your on, on the table here because now this is cool. So you got to remember how you have a hand limit of four. So he he gained um, 10 coins for making that to deliver. Notice these are both black spaces, okay? So he used one of these black spaces to increase his total hand size to five but it costs an additional five to do it. So instead of paying the typical two, which he would have paid for the distance of his train to the place he was delivering, he pays seven, not only the two, but the five for this. But he's got a permanent now plus one to his hand size, which can make for some really big deliveries. That's a great thing. And that's what I've been shooting for myself, but I haven't right, And I get yet. to pick another um, goal. Okay. So I'm gonna, San Francisco, just give me one of them. San Francisco, give you a San Francisco. All right, here's a San Francisco goal to you. Actually, no. Huh? Give me the other one because I, I don't want you to have it. All right, so he's hate drafting me from this because he can hear everything I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that is actually a problem with teaching the game at the same time. Is this is coming up? But let's see what's coming. There's I'm lots all of about there's, hate. there's lots of cow goals and uh, one of them didn't come up. But you know what? That benefits me perfectly. I have lots of buildings and I have a hazard. That's so right. That's not so bad for me either. Doesn't exactly fit what I was going for, but that's fine. All right, so now I've got a conundrum. I've only got a breeding value potentially of eight. Now I could deliver to Colorado Springs and take a goal, which isn't terrible, or I could go for a big hand. I think what I'm gonna do is just be careful here. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, boy, I can pass up a TP for four. That would be a combo of TPs, and I get a chance to cycle. You know what? 
I'm going to go for it. So I'm going to take this blue teepee. So now I have a green and a blue in case I have a goal for that. That'll give me four coins, which is great. I need the coins. Now I get to take a gear action. So with the gear action, I'm going to go ahead and draw two cards and discard two. So here's my two I'm going to draw. A green and a blue. Okay. Well, the blue helps out a little bit because that'll let me get back to the nine that I had before. And because I have one extra breeding value, I'll actually be able to get to the 10 I've been wanting. That risk paid off. All right. Back to you. So now I'm going to move back uh, ne to the next spot. Okay. And yeah. I'm going to buy an engineer for five. All right. Buy an engineer for five. Great. Okay. So now or he's, a builder. He, he's getting a craftsman so he yes. can build bigger buildings. That's great. And did you want to discard any, did you want nope. to sell any cows? Okay, great. So back to me. Okay. So I'm going to go through my steps. No choice here. Um, making delivery. It has to be a green TP. Here I get to choose what to put out. Um, you know, what do I want to be cheap? Uh, you know, another cheap builder probably is, you know, another cheap engineer is good for him. So let me go ahead and actually place another cheap builder out. Oops. Sorry. That goes there actually. Yep. And then now let's do another cheap cowboy. Great. In case I want to go all cowboy stuff. All right. Great. So here we go. We're in this last spot. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to use my purple to go to 10. So that'll give me 10 coins. And I'm going to make a, a, a delivery of one of my, uh, Black space is there. I'm going to do the same thing he did. I'm going to go ahead and place this one in Albuquerque. So Albuquerque is 10. Now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It'll cost me 5 coins to deliver there, plus 5 coins for taking that action. So it's going to cost me 10 coins just to make that, that delivery, but worth it. Now, because I have these two here, I have to take a goal. Well, there was a goal I already wanted, so I'll go ahead and take this goal. And that is my turn. All right, so I'm just going to move up one. But now I get to draw a hand of five. So one, two, Let's three, four, draw four, one. five. Not the best hand in the world, but I'll, I'll take it for now. Okay. What would you now, is this one draw one, get rid of one immediately? or This one is draw as many cowboys as you have in cards, and then this card that many. Yeah, it's a great one. I've been using it up there like crazy. It's a pretty good yeah. little spot. Let's start that. Yeah, now great. I get to move up three. Okay. Yeah. You, you can, know what? You can move up to three spaces with this, just like mine over there. He has One, the same building. One, two, three. Okay. So he bypassed me, but he will have to pay. Oh, oh you have no money. I have no money. Okay. Well, he's going here to his space, and he's going to be able to deliver two cows, sell two equal cows nope. for three coins. <laughs> no? Basically, yeah, I just... It just it just pops him over to the next one because it's got another cowboy move. Would you like nope. to... No. Would you... Okay, now here's the deal. When you stop... I'm going to do a gear act. He can t now, let me show you about the gear action. Remember how you can always take a gear action? He could take a gear action here, but if he did, he wouldn't get the free move. Okay, because right. you have to take either what's here or take the gear action. But here, he can take a single gear action. What would you like to do? And I'm going to draw one and discard one. Okay. Right. He's looking for a better hand. He doesn't have. It, oh no, so. I'm not. I'm just trying to cycle the deck. Okay. Okay. That's, that makes sense. All right. So for me, I've got extra white cattle, so it makes sense to go here and go ahead and sell one of the white cattle for two coins, and I can buy up to two. I can hire up to two people. Let's go ahead. I've been setting up for this, so let's go ahead and get another cheap cowboy. Okay, just this one right here, which goes, now that cowboy is now worth four points, which is great for me. Um, and I get to make another purchase, but I don't, another hire another, but I don't have enough money for it. So that is my action. I am done. All right. Okay. Now, because I used a cow, I get to draw another one. And it's not looking really good in my hand here. So what I'm going to do is go one, two, move the ribbon that one, and move up two more spaces. Uh, actually, no, move up. Okay. Ooh. All right, so he's he's yeah he's what would you like to do? <laughs> he sees something apparently really good. We'll see how <laughs> that works out for him. Yeah, it. move me up two spaces. Okay, so he's moving his train up two spaces because he has two engineers now. You're gonna pass no, this. No, I'm gonna go inside. He's gonna go in there. I'm not gonna put my thing down, but I'm gonna change the station manager. You can't. You gotta actually. Really? You gotta pay for it to do it. I, yeah. I call bullshit. No. All right, yeah, no, you gotta pay for it to do uh, it. All right, yeah, yeah I, I just so can't. You're just, gonna, you're just gonna pass it then, huh? Pass okay, it. great, cool. Well, maybe eventually you can do the backwards action, which lets you just trash a card and right. go back in there. But you need some money. He was out of money. You're gonna move your breeding value up? I already did. You already did, great. All right, so you're done then? Yep. Oh boy, so here comes the money. So I'm gonna have to pass him. That's one space. So there's two, actually, yeah, there's two money to you. Now the thing is, I have to pass him this way because if I were to go this way, this would cost me a ton of money and take a lot of my spaces. So there's one. I like two, I make a lot of mistakes in this game. And we'll go three right here because um, that's my third space. Let's do it. I can discard this black Angus or, or sell this black Angus to move my breeding move my breeding value up two, and I'll gain one coin for every engineer I have, which I have one, so I'll gain one coin total, and that's it for me. All right. 
I do. So, move me the long way around. Uh, they're both the same distance, Marco. Which one would you no, like? No, oh, you're not going to pay me? Okay, lose all your money. <laughs> and you're back to building again. <laughs> Alright, and I'm just going to take gear action. Okay, he's going to take a gear action. Yep. To draw and then discard? Yep. Okay, great. Now, when I did my last card, I get to draw my last... I, when I discard that last card, I get to draw off. So I have no cards on my deck, but I do have both my purple and my brown, which is great. So right now I have a breeding value of... Wait, real quick. I, I want, want this clarified. Sure. Real quick. Sure, sure, sure. Is it the moment that you don't have anything to draw or when you need to draw, you have to shuffle? When you need to draw, you have to shuffle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's what I'm... Yep. Doing. So right now I've got nothing here. So yeah, um, I wouldn't mind increasing my breeding value, but I've already got a 12. Actually, I've got more than 12. I've got a 14 if I count my, my breeding score here, which is great, which lets me deliver another... Use another black uh, disc, yep. which is would be great. So that being the case, I... Could go buy another cow. I've got five cowboys. Five cowboys allows me to buy two browns for eight. I've only got five coins. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and go here. I've got no blacks to sell, but I no black cows. But I can go ahead and buy. I can use. Um, let's see here. Three cowboys to buy two different. To, or I can buy not two different. Two red, blue, or yellow cows for five. Well, I've got exactly five. I'm going to use three for that. So and that gives me the red and the yellow, which I don't have yet. Which takes care of that. Now I've got, I used three cowboys for that. I still had two cowboys left. So I'm going to add two cows to the market um, with one of them and add two cows to the market with the next one. So I used okay. all five cowboys to do this, but I added in uh, two more browns. Great. Uh, which are worth four and five points each. So I'll put the five point on top since it's the one that matters most. Another yellow and another blue. Great. All right, so I'm just going to move oh. to the next spot. New goal, get new goal came out. Another teepee, okay. and that fills up my second. Uh, one. I'll okay. get one for that. Actually, these are all mine, so I'll get one for that. Okay. Um, yeah. And then... Now, his starting goal needs two stations, so he's only got one right now, but if he gets a second one, he'll gain three extra points for gaining that station. Right. Now I'm going to use the gear action okay. to move me back one. Okay, great. So what he allows him to do is he took the TP from here. He can use the gear action to move himself back, remember, to just to get rid of cards. So he yep. got rid of a jersey again. It moves him back one. And, uh, yeah, you can now... Spend two. Spend two. Uh, I'll okay. Go here. He gets to put a white disc here. That'll be worth one point to him. All right. Here but more go. importantly, this is great. If he if he replaces the station manager, which he did, let's show what that does in the detail cam. This right. is a really cool one. One, it gives you a permanent plus one breeding value all the time. And for every combo of TP blue green he has, he'll gain three points in the game. And he's already got a bunch of TP, so that's a really nice. Really nice one for him. Yep. And because that was his second station, he accomplished his original goal too. Yep. So, okay. So back to me. I've got no money. I've got a great breeding. I've got a great breeding value to be able to do. Uh, let's just go ahead and go here. It's one, two. If I stopped there, I can cycle some more for potentially an even better breeding value. But the better, the best it gets is. That's already really good for me. You know, it's already a twelve. I don't know that I need to go up any higher, but I will take advantage of this to go three spaces. So I can I can jump one, two, three, and go over here for a TP, or in a in a in another action. Let me see here. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I think I think I will. Of course, there's six money here just sitting there for me. Let's just go ahead and take the six money. Get done with that, because I think I know what I'm gonna do with it in just a minute. So six coins. For that action, because again, I have uh, all the four spaces. So, okay. Right. I have another question that's popped up, and I think uh, any viewer would want to know this. So, I have a goal in my hand at uh -huh. this point. That's right. If I do not play it when I deliver, do I have to discard it? Yes, it always. Whenever all you right. deliver, you discard your whole hand. So, hmm. now you can play a goal anytime during your turn, before or after your action. Well, the thing is, is that if I move, I'll go and, and yeah, it'll go away. That's yeah. right. It doesn't help There's you. No right point. Now. It doesn't so, do anything for you. Right I have a breeding value of nine. Okay, well, 10, let's, 11, 12. let's go ahead and take take the steps first. So put those into play. He's putting a green TP into play makes sense. An en a engineer and a what was that? Uh, 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 craftsman. Great. Yep. Okay, breeding value of twelve. So gain your twelve yep. coins. Twelve dollars. And where would you, would you like to deliver to El Paso? Yep. Okay, that's another black one. So what would you like to do? Another black disc. Uh, he's going to probably do, well, I don't know what he's going to do, let's see. Movement value would probably help him a lot when he got to this area. Right. 
And that's what I'm gonna so do. there's two movement value spaces on the board. In the two-player game, they only both move you one space, but one gives you three coins and one gives you three points at the end of the game. He gets to choose which one he takes. I took the three points. He took the three-point one, which is great. Okay, great. So he's now in El Paso. At the end of the game, because he controls Albuquerque and El Paso, he'll gain six extra points, which is the bonus between. Okay, great. So I'm going to go to the builder. I've got no green to sell, but I do have, I can go ahead and build a, uh, two levels of a building, which I'll do. I have six coins. I'll spend five. I'll take one back. So I have two coins left. That costs four. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that level three building to a five. This is huge for me because this is a way that I can move my train up a whole lot and create a really nasty hazard for him to have to pass um, or pay to, pay to get past it. It cost him four coins to cross it. Now, granted, he just has been going around it right now, but maybe he won't always do that. So, okay, that was my action. All right, uh, move me to the first base. Okay, so he's, he's right now refilling the, um, the Kansas City area um, with the one, two, and three. And he's going to the first base to, uh, be able to, to be able to hire more people. And we're getting pretty close to the end of the game. We're about two-thirds of the way through, but it does tend to speed along towards the end. All right, so at this point, I'm going to buy, let's go ahead, uh, 13 money. No, that's pretty good. So let's see, anything cheap? Not really. <laughs> no, every, a lot of the, the, everybody gets more expensive over the game, but there so are some only spend, cost six. Yes, yes, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'm gonna spend eight. I'm gonna spend eight to pick up another engineer, which lets him discard a jersey, jersey. for two Money. coins. Yeah, two, two dollars. Okay, great, do you wanna do you want to hire anybody else? I can't, unfortunately, all because okay. it would be value five, because yep. it's, again, two. No, that makes sense. All done there. You know, I'm going to go ahead and move to the end to go here. I definitely want to put down this hazard. I want to create, make it as, as uh, you know what, actually? I should have go that way. I just made it a lot more expensive to go this long route here on, on the mountain track, so maybe he'll actually hit me instead of pay the six to go that way. But who knows? I don't know what he's going to do at this point. Um, I'll move here and go ahead. Now this next guy is going to cost ten. Let's make the cowboys as expensive as possible, so I kind of keep uh, all the, the cowboy market to myself. Now, yep. now we cross this 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 token cross the uh, cattle market again. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's already over seven, so we don't change the cattle market at all. So uh, great. So now my breeding value. So here's what I got. I've got a breeding value of five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I've got a twelve. I can spend more, but twelve is okay with me because I'm going to go to El Paso anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and gain 12 coins. Okay, 12 coins. And now to make to deliver a black disc, it's going to go to El Paso. I'm going to have to press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'll go ahead and pay back 7 of the 12. These, these, this train problem is killing me. Yep. I need to place that on black, a black um, disc. The question is, do I want more movement speed, which would probably help at this point in the game, or do I want a bigger hand size, which cost me the five? I think movement speed's pretty good. Let's go ahead and take the three points at the end of the game for movement speed, and I'm gonna be able to move four now per turn, right. and that moves me back down here. And if you will refill those, Marco, yeah. with the bag. Well, let okay. me go with my turn first. Okay. So I'm gonna go here. All right, let's go into the space. For every cowboy he has, he can cycle his hand. Oh, my hand gets discarded, right. which means it all gets shuffled again. I cycle that, I get to move three. Okay. Um, I'm actually just gonna move there. Okay. So moving my train up three. Three spaces? Yep. Okay. Uh, where's your train? Over here? Okay. So we can go one, two, three. You're on the ten now. And now I'm going to use this action, minus one money, okay. to go into the station. Oh, what, oh, he's got a gear action he's using. Yep. Um, because he can take a gear action. So he's going to move up one. Here's four. One, he two. costs four for that one. It's a white disc. Three and four. Now I want to note, on a black disc area, you can use a black or a white disc. But for white, you can only use a white disc. So... And if you had, that's only if you have a white disc remaining, which he right. has plenty. So here we go. This is his third station. He'll gain two points for that station at the end of the game. Yep. And if he wants to replace the station manager, which he does, he's going to get not only another permanent breeding value, plus every two traps, every two hazards he takes will be worth three points at the end that's of the right. game. So those are pretty good for scaling points. All right, and that's my turn. And now I'm going to fill these yeah, up. Fill that. So I'm going to just, so here goes my, my next, I can have a hand of five cards. Let's see what they are. Okay, I got some diversity here, but uh, I've got a I've got a goal that lets me cycle three. Now I like this goal because I've already got a hazard and I've already got two buildings. So I think before I even go, I'm going to go ahead and play it to draw three cards. So actually, you know what? I'm going to wait a second. No, nope, I do want to do that. So here's one, two, three. This goal now is in play, so I'm going to put it over in my tableau area, which is over here on the left. 
Um, and this is what I got. Now, I'd like to sell one of these white cattle. Boy, I've got a big diversity here. So I definitely want to keep the four, the three, and the three. I want to keep the twos. So these two together would give me a breeding value of four. Um, that's going to be 10. That's 14 at least. I've got 16 over there, which would give me the Sacramento, which is pretty cool. So I'll discard that. I now have a pretty good breeding value. The question is, do I want to do I want to purchase any more? Uh, do I want to hire anybody else? And let me just look for a second because I've got some buildings that are in pretty good sh spaces. Deciding if I want to be able to build another building or not, and it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do that. Um, ba -ba -da -da -da. I really need to get my train moving forward, and there are no engineers on the game board because right. we have we have bought you have bought them all, you have hired all of them. So um, a single cowboy for me is a four point buy, and I get a TP. That's kind of a no brainer right now. So um, the cowboy, the cheapest cowboy out there, there's nine because I made them very expensive. I don't have enough money to make nine unless I I'll go ahead and sell this this white for two. That gives me the nine I need which gets me uh, the last couple here, which lets me take a TP, which I'll go ahead and take this green TP for four coins. So here we go, one, two, three, and four, and that's my turn. All right, so I am going to finally pay Brian. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, whoa, he paid me. Two, three, and, and that cost, four. That costs four. No, There's two hands all there. That's all <laughs> okay. I had. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna move my ring down by oh, down one. I'm actually here, I forgot to mention, okay. All right, and I get to move my train up. Okay, two. How, how, trained up two, one, two, okay, great. So back to me, I'm gonna have to pay you back. Here's two back yep. <laughs> for that. One, um, two, three, I can move four and go ahead and do the, buy cattle, but I don't have money right now. Let's go ahead and do this cool train action that I put out here so I can move my train up three spaces. So that's one, two, I can go in there for three, but I'd rather just keep moving forward. I need more money than anything when I make these big deliveries. So that's my action, I'm done. All right, so. Getting pretty close to the end, so we're we're making sure. He's, so he's got to either pay six to go right, this way here's in two, two spaces, and I'm gonna. Oh, he's gonna go through me. Okay. Yep. Go here. Okay, great. So he was able to move four. One, two, three, four. Pick this. So okay. it gives me my second combo. And a TP. Okay, great. So now he's got two sets of green and blue TPs. All right. And what action am I gonna do? I am going to cycle. Like okay, great. Now for me, I've got. I've got, I've got six cowboys. That gives me a tremendous amount of flexibility here um, on what I'm going to do. So I am going to go here to buy to buy cattle. I've got six coins. Um, a brown cow would cost me six. I have six. That's not bad. Or I can gain two more. I think I'll do that. I think I'll spend the six and get another and gain this five point brown cow. So there's. Uh, it's going to cost me six six coins. Here we go. Those are all gone. Six coins, and that's it for me. I got my cattle, and I am done. That's my turn. Your turn. All right, so I'm going to deliver. I can do nothing but screw myself. <laughs> so there we goes that. Okay. Nothing but. Oh, boy. Engineer, and then. Oh, man, here we go. Okay, we go. so there's only two more movements of this, of this token before right. the end of the game. And so I have... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You got a breeding value of ten at least. And oh, uh, you got some permanent breeding value out there. Eleven, twelve. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to have twelve. And I'm just going to deliver in Topeka. Okay, so he gets tw he gets the full value of the breeding value for twelve. Okay, so he gets twelve twelve coins. Go ahead and take twelve coins. Yep, and put this. In and he's going to put it. He's going to put it in Topeka, which is way back here. So he'll get to keep all his twelve. Remember, even though it was originally bringing value one to deliver there, he still gets twelve points. That's the important thing to understand: is you right. get the whole value up front. So he's back at the beginning, and it's my turn. And I know we don't have a whole lot of rounds left. Um, I'm looking at a bringing value here of, of ten. I'm looking at a bringing value of 13, 14, 15. Gosh, I wouldn't mind getting back to sixteen. So a cycle would be important to do. Let's go here actually, because that lets me draw six cards. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, great, that's that's not great actually, but at least I can take uh, one of the white cows here. And um, I think that's probably the best I can do uh, for my hand. That at least brought me back up to where I can do the 16 if I wanted to. All right, well let's go ahead and let that drop me right here so I can gain six more coins from the four space and I'm done, that's it for me. Your turn. You've seen what my hand is giving me. Okay. Not too shabby. 
Okay. Not too shabby at all. So he's starting what's probably going to be maybe his right, last delivery. I'm going to go for the first one. So he's going to go here. All right, I'm going to buy this engineer for six. Okay. Great. So he's 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 going to hire an engineer for six. It's the only one on the board. So all right, here is my jersey. Okay. Get two money back. All right, great. Because that's kind of a cool thing. Because he's using the engineers for station managers, um, that opens up that one-time effect again. So if he places another engineer in that spot, he gets to take the one-time effect again. Yep. So. And now I'm going to buy something else. Mm, you got to hire somebody else? Not? You got money? I am Oh, you, you're loaded. Now it's going to cost him two extra coins for the second person he hires. So it's up to him how it's he's going to handle eight. that. It's going to be eight. And you know what? I'm going to buy this guy. All right. Five, six, seven. And you know what? Because I can, I'm going to sell my white for. Am I going to do that? <laughs> Are you? you? Know what? Are Why? you? Why not? Because again, I'm just trying to cycle my hand and get two more money. Okay, great. All right, and then I'll drop back up to five. Okay, great. So my turn here. Um, I'm going to have to pay you at least two to go here. So. Stop moving, my guy. Oh, that's, that's not me. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't have to do that yet. All right, here we go. We're going here. I can sell this green. Now, if I sell this green, I risk not having 16. I really would like to have 16 at the end of the game. Um, do, 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 do. If I, I risk not having the 16. Now, I don't have a whole lot of cards left. Now, if I had been counting my cards right now, I would know how many are here. And to briefly look at that, I've got, there is a black in there. There is uh, a green in there, a jersey. So a black, a, a, green, a green wouldn't help me. A black would, a jersey really wouldn't either. Yeah, it's, there's, there's a, there's, I think there's a purple and a brown in there as well. Nope, I used those earlier. So I don't know what's coming up. I'm not gonna take the risk. I'm gonna go ahead and build though. So right. I can build, it cost me four to build because I can build with two levels. Now as cool as this space was, I wanna get to, it, all it was was moving me up three train spaces. This will take from a five to a seven, which is now a nine point building. This is cool. When I go here, I can actually move my train up three spaces. And then I can move back any number of spaces in my train to move the discs up um, however far I want to move them. I actually have to look up and see how many spaces I can move up. It may just be one space, but right. I can't remember. No, no, actually, I think it's it's the breeding. I can move it up the, the, the number of values. So, for instance, uh, if my train's on five, if I took this action, I can move it up to the eight. Then I can spend eight train movement backwards to move one of these up eight basically eight breeding value or eight numbers. So this 10 would become an 18, for instance. Wow. So that's a kind of a cool effect and it's a really valuable building. So I think that is what I'm going to do because it's still a three train movement. So, so I no longer have to pay to get out of my little that's corner right, here. That's right, that's right. All right, so it's, it's, it, it did its job. I'm gonna move up here. It's gonna go through the cards. Okay. And take a look, see, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna get rid of this one. Okay. And then move up three, one, two, three. Okay. Get two cattle, I mean two of this for the black. Okay, yeah, he, he's selling Angus. He's going to be buying cattle in the cattle market. Two, Any three, color that you four, want. Five, six. Let's see. I, actually, I have both of those, but you know what? Let's get a blue. A blue cattle. Okay, great. Why not? Because it's worth great. points. Yep, it's worth more points. That's true. All, All done right. with your cattle action? And that's it. I'm going to skip this, go straight to here. Uh, do I want to make it more expensive for the green TP down? He's benefiting too much from TPs. I'm going to go ahead and throw that hazard in the way. Um, I have been. It's no lie. I can do inexpensive engineers, which doesn't really matter for me at this point. Um, there are no way to make more inexpensive cowboys. Oh, there is. So let's go ahead and put down a inexpensive builder, and I'll put down an inexpensive cowboy. Oh, I guess cowboys don't really help me anymore, do they? So let's not put down the cowboy. Let's put down this guy here. All right, great. So um, there we are. Um, we're this moves off the board next time one of us delivers basically yep. um, or, or could move on the board So let's go here breeding value uh, Four that's 10 11 12 13 14. I'll move it up two for 16. That's a black one here So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself extra movement speed again, and that not only gives me um, the 16 coins for that So let's go ahead and take 16 um, but also because I put a, the, the, the black space on my, um, there's a, I use the black disc that gives me three coins as well on my board. So it's going to add three coins to my game. And now I got to pay the difference, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven come out of my, uh, my coffers there. And that is it for me. All right, move me. me up to the one right before you. One right before me? Yep. Right here? Wait. Right here? Nope, one more. Okay, right here, okay. All right, so I'm gonna move my uh, breeding value down one. Okay. 
And move my train up three. Move your train up three. So here we go. Train up three. You were on at 12, I believe. Yep. So one, two. Into the station. Into the station. Okay. Now, All in right. the station, for every two goals he he's he has got completed. Oh, no, no. He gains actually, three. I need to keep on going. Okay. So he moves to the 14 then. Yeah, because I... No, yeah, actually, I, you get to go to the 15. Sorry, you're I on the 12. I spent all my money. Okay, you're on the 15 now. Yep. So he's getting close to this really nice one here, which gives you extra points for breeding value. He has right. to have six coins to do it. All right, so is it my turn? Yeah. Okay, great. So this hand went away because of the, you know, I used I used it. So I get to draw five cards. There's one, two, three, four, five. There actually was some pretty good stuff there. Now, my goal is to either get an 18 or to get a 14. Either way, it gets me a lot of points. So um, actually a 14 would be even more points than an 18. So I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. One breeding value would be the 14 I need. So now it's just about getting it to town. So do I need to purchase, do I need to add any more people to my, to my uh, empire here? Well, no, people don't actually add points to me anymore, so really no. not. So let's go ahead and go, I can move up to five spaces. So there's one, two, here's your two coins, two, Three, four, moving the train up three would get me into a station, but isn't really worth that many points to me. But I could move a disc um, by doing that. So I can move my train up three, which would bring me to eight, and then move my disc up a number of spaces. So which one's hurting me? Kansas City really hurts me. I don't yes, like Kansas does. City. Um, Topeka wouldn't be as bad, but if I could get it to Colorado Springs, it would be a lot less bad, which would be a five. So let's take this action. I'm gonna move, move my train up three. One, two, three. Now I'm gonna move my train back five. So one, two, three, four, five. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Not quite as bad, it didn't hurt me as bad, it just moved around the stations. So that's gonna move this disc up from a zero. Oh, I gotta go back six, sorry. Six to go from zero to Colorado Springs. Now because I completed Colorado Springs and Santa Fe, I get to draw a goal, and I'll go ahead and take this one into my deck. All right. Great. And now I'm going to try to move it along here. Oh, he just shot through there. You got any money for me? Uh, yes, here's two. Yay, two money for me. All right. All right. And just I'm paying gonna, each other. That's great. That's all right. Great. Uh, I'm going to pick up the teepee. Mm -hmm. Another teepee. There's no blues coming out. Okay. So, But I will get a money for that. Okay. And then I'm going to spend that money as a gear action to move my train up one more. One more space? So train up goes up to 16? Yep. Okay. That's it for you? Yep. So here's what I'm looking at the game. The game will end the next turn he delivers, okay? Now here's what happens if the game ends. Um, he'll, finish the, he'll finish his little route, and then every other player, me, gets exactly one turn. So one of the complaints I have about this game is that there aren't an even number of turns. It depends on when you win, and, and if there was four players. It, regardless of who ended it, everyone else but that player gets one extra turn. The player who ended it does get two points, but actually sometimes the games are close enough, you can lose the game by ending the game. Right. Because you don't get that extra action, which gives you a ton. So I'm looking at the game, I'm gonna get two more actions. Man, I would love to make this delivery. The problem is, is that I don't know that I can get, I can move up to five spaces, so let's see how many spaces are between me and the end. You can make it. Now if I go here, I can buy some more cattle, which is just straight up points for me. But if I can get to San Diego, I'll get 12 points for San Diego alone which is worth way more than cattle. So let's see the cats count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces between me and the end. If I can get to here, it lets me move forward three and take another action space, and lets me cycle my hand. I need at least one hand cycle or one breeding value to get to 14. So let's see here, what do I wanna do? If I stop at the cattle, I can go one, two, and then go one, two, Three, it won't get me far enough. This was a little bit too, I should have put it here a long time ago. It would have gotten me further, but but I'm in a state where I can never take this action again, um, at least and not complete and not use it to move forward. So if I take a cattle action, I can go one, two, three, four, five, but that still won't get me in. So I can't do cattle at all. So it just comes down to which one's gonna get me the most points. This is a train movement, which would be one, who cares about that, and one breeding value. I do need a breeding value. This is another building, and buildings are worth points, you know, in the end. Um, but it doesn't help my breeding value. I got one chance for this. So I think the best thing I can do And Bruin says take he's got an AP here. Yeah, what well, is my... All, it's all come down to AP. He one, already knows This is he my won. second to last action here, so <laughs> here we go. Okay, so if I go one, two, three, that'll let me go one, two, three, which will let me cycle my hand. Right. So um, I think... 
think that's, I'm just, there's just too much risk to do that. So I'm gonna go one, two, I'm gonna go ahead and take this. It moves my breeding value up one. That guarantees me I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's 14, that's what I need for San Diego. I'm not even gonna take the risk. I do get to move my train up one space. Um, why not one point if I just spend two? So right. Let's do that and I will take this action here and put that here. Um, great, why not one point, okay, done. All right, so I'm going to finish this out. Okay. So this TP's. is gonna go now, here. He will not get another turn Nope. in the game. I will have one more turn, which is exactly what I need to finish. All right, and I have breeding value of 10, okay. 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, yeah, you might as well spend it all, right? Yep. So use all those two, so those move up. And so you gain 14 coins for that, and you're gonna play a blue disc, I imagine, on San Diego, eh? Yep. Which is just a white. Yeah, but it's a lot of points, potentially. Well, it's eight points well, it for you. Doesn't matter where it goes. Yeah, it's eight points for you. Okay, it's all done. Okay, great, and that's it for you. There's yeah. no reason to even refill this because I only get one action, and it's not going to matter what happens. So he's got two points. My final action is to go one, two, three, four. I'm going there too. Again, no point in putting these down. This is the final action of the game. My breeding value is to count it one more time. That's ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I'll gain fourteen coins. Here's I'll take fifteen and put one back. And breeding value 14 lets me put a white token right here on San Diego, which completes that grouping there. And I think, and that would be the end of the game. That's the end of the game. So now we're gonna count points. And so points. We just need a pencil. That's right. Uh, pencil would be good. Let me grab a pencil real quick. Calculator. All right. Calculator is a good idea as well. Unfortunately, actually, I have a calculator over here. So All right. Can you show them the. the All right. Uh, so it's right here. Go ahead and put in the detail. Move my stuff out of the way. They can see. Okay, no. and then we, they can see how we count the points as we go. Let's go into detail cam. And so you talk and I'll type. All right, so right now it is points, uh, five money per, uh, five money gives you one point. Okay. So I have 14, so I get two points. Okay. Oh, I lose money for the distance between my train. Can you oh. go ahead and pay that? One, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven money. Okay. So get you three coins back. Great. Okay, how much do I get in points for money? Three. Three, okay. Three. All right, Ten. next is buildings. You have nine, 10, you have 13. 13 points worth of buildings. Yep, I have four. Okay. Next, you'll see here, uh, what is that? Oh. It's the banner across. Okay, that's the delivery spaces. All right, so the delivery spaces, you have yeah. six, 10, uh, 18. Oh, okay, you're counting them up, okay. Yeah, 18, um, 24, 23. 23 total, okay. Yep, and I have uh, eight, uh, that's 14. 14, okay. Yep, next we have stations. Okay. I have one, two, three, four. Okay, I have uh, one, right? You have none. Oh, oh, you yeah, have one. I have one, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, now we have hazards. You have four. I have none. Four points for hazards, okay. All right, now cattle. I don't have your deck. Okay. I'll go get, separate my cattle deck. So um, you can see over here, so all the cattle that you had at the beginning of the game have a star on it to show your player color. They're not worth points. So we're just going to pull out all the cattle that are actually um, later on in the game. Now, these, this is a goal that I didn't play, so I may not use it. Let's take a look here. Okay, so that's 10, 15, um, plus seven, so 22 in cattle for me. Okay, what do you got in cattle? All right, I have seven. Seven? Seven yep. cattle, okay, what's next? All right, next is uh, goals. Goals, okay. So I have six. Whoops. Let me pull my goal out from behind here, if I can get it. Okay. So let me see if I've got my goals here. I've got the hazard. I've definitely got the buildings, right? Yep. Three buildings is what I've got. Um, that's going to be a, a green, a red, and a brown. Scare that. Two buildings to scare that. This goal needs a purple and a hazard. Oh, I don't have the hazard. So because I used the hazard on this one, I'm not going to fulfill this goal. It's not. It was in my hand anyway. I don't have to play it. So here we go, this is good. So this is what I've got. So it's gonna be a total of, uh, looks like six points for six me. Six and six. 
Six and six and goals, okay? Yep. Six. All right, next is... Is it the one on the board? I don't know. Okay, so we'll do it. Okay, that's actually the station. Station. That's the station. Oh, that's where all your points are going to come from. Right, so You've got three stations, so. Yeah, so mine is, let's see, that is three, I get zero six, these. seven, eight, nine, uh, nine. Nine points for you, total? Yep. Okay, I got zero. Go ahead. All right, hey, next. Hey, hey, you beat me in one of the. Oh, shut up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, next is people. You have eight. Okay. All right. Okay. And then we both have three for the next one. Oh, what, the next one's the 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 one that's all me. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Cool. And then the last one is the two points for me. Okay, you're the person that finished the game, so two points for Marco. All right, so here we go. Summing up the totals, yay for Excel. Easy sums. Okay. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. So final score: Marco with 51, Bryn with 83. So. There it is. I'll take the victory. It's a shame. Oh boy. Well, we hope you enjoyed uh, Great Western Trail. We, I certainly did. I got the win of the game. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> I've actually I, lost the game really he bad. He has not been winning this game. <laughs> He's not winning this when game. we're not on camera. <laughs> true like the last time we played Sean won and I came second <laughs> I got in, I got 40 points my last yeah, game it was the worst game I've ever and played and the game before that I beat him then yep like sure I did. got first in that one that's right and now I just went to last so you know you know there was there's was kind of a something that people say about this game and that's the cowboy strategy is pretty dominant and I usually never use it but it just became kind of obvious this game because of how it was set up so yeah I've, I've usually been trying to you go, go the all cowboy route. Yeah, and that one's a very difficult one. Buildings are hard. I mean, everything, every route you can take, you can actually potentially win from. That's right. There's a ton you of know, points. Yeah. Trains. You if as long as you get on the side. Oh, of the I board, usually do the trains. I've gotten over a hundred points with trains. Right. Yeah, just, they're great. Points. And then you know, with cowboys, with getting all those cows, th those points just add up. Yep. Over sure and do. over again. And then you get the goals that are on top of that. That was my single biggest source of, source of points was just cattle counting up. Cattle. Right. So yeah. And then again, then you have buildings and that one you have to diversify as much as possible yep. and then build up um, all your bigger buildings because you actually have buildings that are worth 13 points yeah there's there's some big big ones there yeah and I decided not to go to the next one which I could have done here but I was like no I really I I, um, I already getting nine points from it wasn't worth it there right. I needed to be able to get that 14 because that was a ton of points there right. well thank you for joining us uh, join us next week when we do well, we, uh, you know what? I, it depends. So if we have a third player, we'll play a different game than if we have two players. No, no, no. Next week, we're not going to have a third player. It's okay. going to be... Well, uh, nope, there's still two choices. No, it's going to be Feast for Odin. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be Feast for Odin. <laughs> okay, we're playing Feast for Odin. Uh, another one I'm going to lose at because Bryn loves Feast for Odin. I love Feast for Odin. Rosenberg is not my style of game. Rosenberg is my favorite. Okay, so... Uh, so okay. join us next week for uh, Feast for Odin. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us this week uh, with Great Western Trail. We've got uh, one more thing to share. We're doing something new. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot. This is pretty important. So you may have seen at the beginning before the show, we had the discussion video where we choose a topic that's current, you know, to the industry or, you know, that, that affects you. And we talk about it a little bit, right? Well, here's what we're going to do this time. We want to turn the discussion truly over to you. So each week, we're going to feature a discussion that we're going to release on Thursday. Okay? So it's going to be a pre-recorded discussion that he and I have introducing a topic. But then you get to participate because on Sunday morning, after we debut, after we launch the initial video showing what the mm -hmm. discussion is going to be, we're going to go live to talk to you about what you think about it. We want right. to hear your opinions, and we'll respond with each other, and it's going to just be a great open, open-ended live discussion. We right. don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. So, so we'll start at ten o'clock on Sundays. We'll post on Thursdays so you can know what the discussion is going to be about yep. and hear about our original thoughts. Yep, and have your arguments ready. That's right. <laughs> Bryn never shuts up. Never shuts up. <laughs> not even now. <laughs> and I'm stubborn. Still, still not shutting up. So even if I'm wrong, I, I won't admit it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining us.